Again, we are not on our regular day, but it's the way it has to be. So let us get right into it. I did not realize. Um, I realized which one that I had to do for our ground lesson flows. Um, ra -da 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 -dum, flight instructor practical test standards for airplane. Once again, surprise surprise um so yes i was figuring out which one we were going to do the next one da, 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 da. last week we did hang on nope a little too far um, um uh we did navigation aids and radar services next one being logbook entries and certificate endorsements did that one water and seaplane characteristics irrelevant seaplane bases blah blah, blah. irrelevant for now uh, next one, pre-flight preparation certificates and documents. Already did it with the log books, and log books and certificates. Next one being weather information. Uh, but I utilize the um, old aviationweather.gov and have not yet had a chance to revamp for the new one. So we're doing operation of systems. Yay. And so I did. I figured that out. And then I re realized how many... There, there's no, there's, there's no whiteboard for this one. It is only images, and this is one that I am going to put into a PowerPoint for the revamp, because you will, you will, you'll see all of, all of the images. 
So, task C, reprieve light preparations, operation of systems. Objective, to determine that the applicant exhibits instructional knowledge of the elements related to the operation of systems as applicable to the airplane, to the airplane used for the practical test by describing the following systems. One, primary and secondary flight controls. Two, trim. Three, water rudders, irrelevant. Four, power plant and propeller. Five, landing gear. Six, fuel, oil, and hydraulics. Seven, electrical. Eight, avionics, including autopilot. Nine, pitot-static, vacuum pressure, and associated instruments. Ten, environmental. Eleven, de-icing and anti-icing. Yeah. I need my thing. So, here it is. And my original rough draft lesson plan for operation of systems. In order to safely and efficiently operate an aircraft, we have to be able to notice and handle any problems that may arise. So we must be familiar with the systems installed on the airplanes that we fly. Primary and secondary flight controls, as well as trim, uh, we went over in another lesson, so we're not going to do that here. That is in lesson um, two, part E or er, part two, task E in airplane flight controls. So we're on to power. Um, do 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 do. And starting with our engine, we are going to go to our handy dandy POH for the aircraft that I fly in real life. I, yeah, it's a. Digital copy doesn't count for actual um, POH-ness. So we go to this page, and we have, I guess I could zoom in. It's probably a little bit teensy-weensy. Boom. Okay. All the way to the bottom here. Boom. Engine. Continental engine. O 200 a Let's check this. Standard and trainer. Yes, standard and trainer. O 200 a What that means is... If there was an I in front of it, uh, that would mean it is fuel injected versus having a carburetor. So since there's no I, this one is fuel is not fuel injected. It has a carburetor. O means it is horizontally opposed, which means there are cylinders on either side of the crankshaft. 200 is the displacement in cubic inches, um, which is the cylinder volume that is swept by all of the pistons, excluding the combustion chamber. There are four cylinders in this engine. Um, the parts being, um, we have the cylinder here, uh, we have our intake valve, our exhaust valve here and here, uh, the piston here, spark plug, one on either side, crank case is here, crank shaft being here, connecting rod there, and there's all our parts. There are four different stages of the, um, uh, power cycle or sorry the um yes the the cycle uh there's the intake the compression the power and the exhaust so what happens in the intake um oh my gosh i can zoom oh and now i wrecked it sorry hang on oops there um we will leave it as it is so how that works what happens first um uh first part of the cycle is the intake so this intake valve opens as the piston comes down and it draws that fuel and air mixture into that chamber and then it comes back up and around and the intake valve closes the piston comes up it compresses so compression um part of the cycle compresses that fuel and air mixture um spark plugs add a spark which uh causes that power which brings that piston back and then the piston comes back up the exhaust valve opens and all of the uh, leftover bits get exhausted out of the exhaust valve um, and since there are four cylinders uh, usually each piston is on a different uh, stage per yeah is on a different stage so that e at least one is on the power stage at any given time so the a is just the model number Excellent. So now we're on to the propeller. The propeller is itself an airfoil and it is twisted um, in order to 
provide uniform force uh, along the length of the propeller. According to our POH, it is fixed pitch, which we'll come back to. <clears throat> and its diameter is six niner inches, and we will move on. Fixed meaning that it remains as it is installed. The throttle controls the engine uh, RPM, and in turn, that also controls the propeller RPM versus a constant speed propeller where the throttle um, controls the engine RPM uh, and the propeller controls the propeller RPM. Those two are separated. It is constant speed because the blade angle uh, maintains a set RPM. Therefore, that set RPM, constant speed. Then we have our fuel uh, thing. Oh, I can flip this off. Oops. There. Okay. Um, yes. No, no, I don't want this yet. Sorry. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Not that one. <laughs> Not yet. That is coming. Uh, figure page something or other. Figure two, two. It's easier to find stuff with an actual book. There, uh, two and two. Yay! Um, here we go. The fuel system. So in our Cessna 150G, um, our fuel system is gravity fed. There is a tank in the left wing, tank in the right wing, and they feed into uh, the fuel selector. It is simply on or off which then sends it through a fuel strainer, which can go either to the engine primer, which goes to the intake manifold. Uh, otherwise, it goes directly to the carburetor, uh, which is controlled by the throttle and the mixture control knob. Um, and after that, it goes directly to the engine cylinders. Um, so the primer you use before turning it on, if necessary, in order to prime the engine for start carburetor there we go boom nope not that one sorry there that one boom um carburetor yay so parts of the carburetor we have our chamber our float cha chamber this is a float type uh yeah float type chamber um we have the fuel coming in from here attached to this float type device and that um determines the uh level of fuel in the chamber so as it comes down then it will let more fuel in um, uh, this, hang on, <laughs> I have, I have it set for a specific, yes, so now, so yeah, so there's a chamber, float type, there we go, um, air intake and venturi, so this comes in, air comes in from the outside through here, um, and this creates a, uh, right here, this venturi creates an area of low pressure, um, that uh, draws the fuel out of the chamber. Um, the mixture needle here um, is controlled by the mixture control in the cockpit, and it um, uh, does the thing. <sighs> controls. It controls. I know words. Controls uh, how much. How much. The, it controls the ratio of the fuel to the air. Um, so usually it is one part fuel to 15 parts. One part fuel to 15 parts air. Yes, that. Um, and then the throttle controls this valve here, and that just determines how much of that fuel air mixture gets sent through to the um, cylinders. And then we have, I should have had a, di yeah, yep, I should have had a diagram, but so we have seen um, uh, the starter. So for our starter system, we have our keys that go into the little um, thing, and then it's got a left, a right, a both, and a start. So there, the battery um, sends, hang on. Yeah, battery sends juice to the starter, which turns the crankshaft and the prop, which um, uh, connected to the magnetos sends a spark to the spark plugs, and then the process begins. So magnetos are a rotating magnet providing a spark independent of the electrical system. Each one is, and I guess we can look at that. Oops, where is it? There it is. So each one of the magnets is connected, or yes, each one of the magnetos is connected to one spark plug 
uh, in each cylinder. So one magneto is connected to this one in each cylinder, one is connected to this one in each cylinder, or kind of vice versa. So um, that is why we have on our starter the left, right, and both. So usually we have the keys set to both um, versus having them just on one magneto. Cooling. Um, ha. So we have our air that gets vented through um, and helps cool it. Um, but then we also have oil, which ours is six quarts total uh, according to the POH. Um, yes, six quarts total according to the POH. Uh, for us, we keep it under five uh, according to the dipstick. Um, the oil cools, lubricates, and cleans. Yes, this one. Uh, as well as, oh, so so like this. So we have our oil filter cap and dipsticks. We have that right there. Um, and yeah, so it starts, where's the start sump? There, yes. So oil starts in here. Low pressure oil screen gets pumped through. High pressure oil screen gets cooled and filtered. And then it gets sent all over the place. Uh, and we can, um, yeah, all through the engine and accessory bearings, um, and we can monitor our oil situation slash condition on our gauge, our temperature, as well as our pressure. Oil is also used for um, constant speed propellers. So how constant speed propellers work, I have to do a different thing here. Oop, and boom. Boom. So how that works so here we go we got our blue lever in the cockpit so how that works is when you pull the lever back that releases tension on this spring which which lets the fly weights fall outward which lifts this valve here um letting oil letting oil go into that hub um and so that piston gets forced backward and that increases the blade angle so that the RPM decreases. Because the RPM decreases, this, uh, these flyweights uh, come back to equilibrium. And this, um, what is it? Valve, this valve goes back to uh, there and it sits until uh, something changes it. Um, and then vice versa for the lever being in. If, um, the propeller gets oversped, um, it will move out under, yeah, you move the lever out. Yes. It moves itself out. And if, uh, it experiences an underspeed, um, the piston goes in. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely have to, uh, reword some of these things. Um, and then something that my instructor mentioned that I should mention, uh, if all oil pressure is lost, um, then the propeller will, uh, default to a low pitch, high RPM situation. Landing gear. I got to put this back up. Boom. Boom. Oh. Oh, it's all cut off. I'm sorry. That's not that, I guess. Nope, not that one. Yes. Landing gear. Our landing gear are fixed. They uh, have, have wheels, um, so as opposed to skis or floats. Uh, tricycle gear. So it's got the nose wheel in the front as well as the two mains. Um, and it's got hydraulics in the... It's got hydraulics, so for their suspension and braking... In the nose gear it is a closed system um so here we have our reservoir and then it gets pumped into here which changes this which sends stuff over here and depending on where this position is that um that affects the things it is connected to um retractable gear on the other hand uh those retract into the fuselage to reduce drag uh, they have position switch and indicators, mechanical or hydraulic connections to the gear. Do, do, do this. Nope. Not that one. This, this one. Um, uh, yes. Um, this one there. Yes. Um, electrical. 
Uh, it is a 14 volt, according to the POH, it is a 14 volt DC system. Um, it has a master switch, which um, powers an engine driven alternator, as well as, or has uh, settings for a engine driven alternator, as well as a 12 volt storage battery. The ammeter fl uh, indicates the flow of current in amperes. If alternator battery, oh, it indicates either the alternator charging the battery or the battery um, sending power to the electrical system. In those instances, it's either the charging rate of the battery versus if the alternator isn't working, then it's just the discharge of electricity. We have mostly fuses, a couple of circuit breakers, and what those do is they protect electrical circuits, um, which um, fuses you replace, circuit breakers you reset. And then we have a diagram on this page that we could use um, in order to troubleshoot in flight if we absolutely needed to. Otherwise, on the ground, we're just going to send it to maintenance. We have switches. Um, for our lights, our pitot heat, and our flaps, we have avionics, radios, GPS, um, certain digital instruments. And this is something, too, I wasn't sure how deep I was supposed to get into um, these sorts of things. Uh, because, like, so specifically, we have Navcom, we have Garmin 530W, and we have um, a PFD and stuff. But the thing is, is DP is not necessarily going to know. Yeah, no, I don't think he's going to know uh, what we have until we get into the plane. So if I say something <laughs> different than what we actually have, because I don't want to talk about it, um, then it, 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 I've already passed the orals, so we good. So, um, oh, shoot, I forgot. I, ooh, um, I might have to do a thing. Hang on. So yeah, so we got radios, GPS, we got our, yeah, we got radios and GPS. We'll just stick with that. Autopilot we do not have, but autopilot is, we have to talk about it. So it is an automatic flight control system. I guess I could go up, well, I'll go up, yeah, there, yeah. Um, autopilot is an automatic flight control system, helps reduce pilot workload. Uh, Primary, uh, a lot of them have altitude and heading hold, so it keeps plane in level flight and on a set course. Um, hello, hello. How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. I hope you're well. We're doing operation of systems. Yay. It's a lot. It's it's a gigantic mouthful. Don't take that into account. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, it uses attitude indicators and compasses along with that are connected to servos on the flight controls in order to maintain whatever is set. Um, I need to bop this down a little bit or uh, bop this off a little bit. I forgot. Oh, and I, oh, I did a whole thing. Hang on. Oh, shoot. Um, oops. Oh, gosh. Um. I forgot that this one. Yes. Yes. Let me tab. I want to go back this one over here. Nope. Yes. I even like painstakingly sat and labeled them right before I uh, presented this to my instructor and I completely forgot that I did that. So. Sounds fun. Absolutely. Yes. Took it out of context. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it was right there. So, <laughs> uh, that, that, ha that has like stuff that has to do with like maintenance and systems and stuff. It, like my instructor and I have said how many times, like, why, why is it that stuff specifically that always leads to the dirty jokes? It's just, they're, they're just always there. <laughs> and, and I'm going to stop talking. So otherwise, yes, I am a lady. So, instruments. Oh, I have to put this back up. Sorry. Da, 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 da. Um, our instruments. We have basic six-pack is airspeed indicator, attitude indicator, altimeter, 
turn coordinator, directional gyro or heading indicator, and a vertical speed indicator. Um, our systems, we have um, different systems uh, powering different instruments. Um, first one being our pitostatic. Can you see all the things? Yes, you can. Hello, hello, didn't know I was gonna be on tonight. I did put in the thing. Um, yeah, I had to I had to switch it up. Um I have to wake up early on Wednesday. So sorry I did. I kind of put it probably late notice in in the Discord, but yes, yeah, sorry. Hello, hello, how is it going? It is a pito system. We're talking about the pito system. So how y'all doing? I hope you're well. But yes, yes, t tubes and uh, <laughs> ramming. Anyway, pito static, yay. We got our pito tube, we got our static port. So what our static does is it senses atmospheric pressure and that, boom, is connected to our uh, altimeter. Well, it's connected to all of them, but we're gonna talk about the altimeter first. Um, so uh, uh, moving to this one now. Oh, hello. Um, ah. Wait, what kind of failure was that with the six pack? The attitude indicator and turn court. Oh God, did I pick one that was completely, I didn't even look. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's, yes. So, okay. Now we're, <laughs> okay. Hi, by the way, how's it going? So let's, um, so it's showing, it, honestly, it looks just entirely messed up because this is showing potentially a climb while this is showing a descent. This is turned this way. This is turned this way. So it's just a general failure, and I completely failed to find something. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have found something proper. Uh, uh, just ignore my inabilities. Is it a multi-engine pito system or a single-engine pito system? Oh, God, I don't know. Single-engine. We're going to go with sing. I mean, I mean, that's a great question. We'll come back to it. <laughs> no, single-engine. Always single-engine. You were on the sim all day, so you probably didn't catch it. Okay, sounds good. Well, I hope it was fun. What were you doing? Need that clarified. Odo is absolutely single engine, because I'm not talking about multi-engine. Oops, stuff yet. I know nothing. I know nothing. Um, and you were on the sim too. The, the sim sim? Looks like you should probably just... Land, if it's looking like that, yes, absolutely, definitely. Wasn't sure if this is something I needed to identify. No, no, um, thank you for bringing that up, though, because definitely going to make sure that I don't put, when I revamp this and put it into a PowerPoint, I should make sure that they're all level and stuff, because otherwise DP is going to, yeah, come at me with that. <laughs> don't give him any reason to bring up anything ever. But yes, no, for now, we're just... We're, yeah, just, just going over a briefish overview. Um, you spent a good eight hours flying. That does sound very good. You could send me all your CFI PowerPoints that you used. Maybe. If you want them, you also have Google Docs that, oh, sorry, that links every slide to it. So in the chat, I can use one page to get all the sources. I mean, I will, de I, uh, I will, I'll definitely, I'll definitely take them and I'll take a look at them, but I, I do, I want to make sure I do them by like myself. Cause that does, that really does settle it into my mind and everything. But yeah, for reference, I'll, I will take it. I will take it all. Has every part of PTS ooh in it. So it's up to me if I want them. I would, if, if you're cool with that, absolutely. Told PowerPoints were the way to go. And so what my instructor did, he did PowerPoints for the ones he absolutely knew he was going to have to do. And then like certain ones that he was thinking probably. So uh, that is, that is now that I've done one of them, um, it, it, I did figure out how, how to kind of do it, I guess. So it should be easier now that I have all of the, all of the info in all of these. So I can just kind of organize them into there then. And yeah, so the white, the whiteboard worked out for me right away as I was getting used to like the teachy sort of things. But yeah, I do think that I'm going to like the PowerPoint as well. 
Wait, with the CFI track ride, you uh, usually need to have a slideshow presentation. You, you, you teach it to the DP the way that you're going to teach it. Kind of. So, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like you really don't, I don't know. <laughs> you do. You, you're basically teaching it kind of how you would like to teach it. And then once you actually get into teaching, you kind of uh, adjust it as necessary. So, yes, you can use PowerPoints. Um, I started out, I was just going to use whiteboards, use uh, little models if you need to, um, diagrams, just kind of with you, paper stuff, anything like that. So, yeah, so just having all the things that you need and presenting it however it's going to work for you and however you think that it would work for a student and however the DP is going to accept it. <laughs> You'll send them thank you. I have an email that I can add uh, or would you want me to give them to you? Um, uh, yes, I have a ideological at gmail.com. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that, that would work perfectly. Uh, they're for the, oh, for the archer. Right. That's the other thing, but only a few things need to be altered. Right. Excellent. Yeah. And right. You don't, you don't have to do it that way, but it, it, it does. It makes everything nice and compact. I, I thinking my, um, I can't remember who told me if it was my instructor right now or somebody else. And they brought just like freaking bins of stuff of binders of things and models and all their different lesson plans and yeah, and it was just they had like tubs and stuff. So uh, so far, I'm not gonna need that. <laughs> if I have most of everything on um a laptop, or if I just have to bring my little whiteboard with or whatever, we will we'll figure it out. But yeah, it is. It's just that's why this that's why this one of the reasons why the CFI is so tough and involved. I guess is just all the different sort of things that you need, and then just the amount of time it takes. So yeah, was just going on, uh, to go off a lesson plan, but the PowerPoints guide you into the direction and it helps hundred percent because if you forgot something it is right in front of you. And once you read the first sentence, honestly, just rejogs your memories and can go off the top. Right. And that's, that's the thing that, uh, was, I was a little hesitant about the PowerPoints for me just because I end up, I feel like I end up reading off of them <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Um, so, but I do, I think I, I started finding a, a rhythm with the one. So I, I just got, I just got to work on it and practice. So yeah, fun. But after five hours, you started getting a headache and then after eight hours, you couldn't do it anymore. So you logged off, which is probably a good choice, but it was, it was, it was, it was, it was good for a while. <laughs> Get headaches only when it's a super stressful day. Hopefully it's very few and far between super stressful days. One second, PowerPoint's coming in hot. Sounds good. Thank you. I do. I appreciate that. Walked into your check ride with an iPad and a backpack with your in-flight stuff. Yeah, th things, things, things are different now. And kill that oral. Yes. Didn't want to read, but he said, teach you. Uh, teach me how you would teach your student. And And that's the thing is I have been noticing, I think, that I am... I am. I'm still in the, I feel like I haven't quite transitioned to the actual teaching mindset. Like I am, I'm presenting the info, but I definitely feel like I would do it differently for an actual student, which I'm glad I'm revamping things now, but it's, I don't know, that just kind of keeps on all the work that I put in and now I'm going to have to re redo it again because I don't have the mindset right. But yeah. So you read off of it. And if you thought of something right, that would then break off, talk about a little tidbit items and then continue. Had nothing to say. 95% reading off the PowerPoint. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. No, and, that, and that's absolutely fair. I do. I, uh, I just worry... I guess, how are you about kind of talking off the cuff, though? Because I have never been an improv person. I know it's not really improv as long as you know the stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but 
I don't know. I just worry that I'm gonna get I'm I'm gonna get thrown off, but I have packed a couple I can and it's true. <laughs> so at least you can do it. Okay. All right, fine. All right, fine. Well, thank you. Did not like you being on the sim that long. He didn't like uh riding shotgun, being co-pilot. Hello, hello, Cold Nebo. Good to see you. Can I check my mail real quick? Okay, hang on. Let me uh <laughs> bop this off for a second. Or I'll just open up a whole new thing here. Boom. Mm. I mean, th this is strictly for my um, what's it stuff. So, um, I don't have anything yet. You suck at it. You're not an improv. Okay. But the slides help to bring back everything you forgot. Fair, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I guess the getting it, getting it all into the slides and then practicing it and then realizing what stuff that you need to, I don't know, what all you need to get in there still. You just think of it as the same as talking to a friend or something. Right. Or I guess in this case, talking to Twitch chat. Well, that's why it does. It seems to some degree, like, easier to do it with you guys. I don't know. It's just, it, it is. The the different the different scenarios and stuff, I don't know. They do, they get, throw me off. And then, yeah, and that's what I do is, like, I, I'm still really in the book stuff where I'm just, like, duh, 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 robotic, sort of, just get the information out sort of thing. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be in drive. Oh gosh. What does that mean? Doesn't it just go to my email? <laughs> this thing? Oh, not that one. Hang on. Oh, yes. Yes, I have them. Thank you. I will. I I will I will go through that. That is awesome. Thank you. Yay. I didn't realize it did stuff like that. I thought that it could just come to my email and then do stuff, so. Um Yes. Uh possibly getting words can't say because you're wait, what? Possibly getting words you can't say because I was doing them on Wednesday. What do you Oh, 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 got it. Oh, no. Nope, we're not saying it. We're not saying it. Nope. It's right up there with the other S words. <laughs> As a PPL student, there's so much information. Yes, feel like you're forgetting half of it now. Trying to keep it all in your head is a challenge. And and that's the thing. Again, PPL, though, is licensed to learn. So you're, you're just going to keep on learning. And, and the more you go, the more you're going to realize you don't know. And the more you realize you don't know, the more you're going to try to know. And the more <laughs> it, it doesn't end. So, um, y yes, as much as you feel like that now, <laughs> but it is, that's, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just keep going through it and practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Um, on Wednesday, yeah, like, just like wait, wait another week and a half, and then it, and then it's December, and it's fine. We'll have to figure out how to copy and change things. Sure, made a viewer because I am with another eight people that you shared. Okay, sounds good. I will, I will hopefully figure it out. I will, I'll figure it out. Thank you. Can I have anyone messing with your slides for your future CFI applicants? Absolutely not. Oh no, 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 no. Um, oh, hello, Mustafa, how's it going? How, how is it, how is your stream? What were you doing? Thank you for the raid, it's good to see you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll pop, I'll pop the, uh, what we're doing now back up on the screen. But a boomba Yay. Operation of systems. No, 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 I will not teach you. This is not teaching. No teaching here. 
absolutely not. So, yes. F so, disclaimer below. I am not an instructor. I am a CFI in training. So, I'm just working through my flows and knowledge, and y'all get to watch me suffer. So, hello, hello, and aviation chicken, yes! Hello, hello! <laughs> Watch that and pass private and commercial. Is it, which one is it? Oh, gosh. Mach 3 commercial check ride. I don't remember what that is, but I am in a very steep position. <laughs> oh, they are. They're so fun. Hello, hello. I wish that, wait. Oh, there's got to be a, there. It's a moose heart. <gasps> I did a moose heart. Is that a thing? Is that a thing already? By the time you get to your check ride, you won't know everything, but you'll know enough to continue learning on your own. Right, exactly. And it was funny for CFI, my instructor goes, as soon as you feel like um, you don't know anything, that's when you're probably about ready for your check ride for CFI. Awesome. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, chicken says hi to. He's very happy to see you all. Oh, God, male anatomy. <laughs> Oh, are we are we uh, are we, are we talking about the pizza tube or <laughs> you will absolutely not learn anything here. That is correct. That is correct. You are flying the can I say that while still sounding like a lady? Uh you're flying the Fokker 25. And how was it? <laughs> Fokker, I don't never mind. Sorry. As a CFI, you will say this is a hundred percent. As good as a teacher, so listen to every word she said. Because, it, no, 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 no. Ignore that. No, 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 no. I am. I, like, again, again, I will also say, too, these lesson plans, I have to revamp. I haven't gone over them in a while. So uh, there are certain things that I said and uh, did um, back then that I don't have on here. And now it, it's it's a little... Uh, 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 it's a little bit uh, jerky um, after not doing it for a while. So, so. Oh, 28. Okay, sounds good. Uh, except for Mustafa, you learn a lot from his singing. Excellent, excellent. She will help. No, 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 no. You must stop that. Love it. It is so yummy. Oh, that's awesome. Excellent, excellent. Yes, Moose Heart. That is. That works. That works perfectly. <laughs> right before you walked in the door for the CFI, you dropped your iPad and cracked the screen protector. Oh no! And, but but it, but it was all good, like because that's actually been one of my fears. Because if I put everything on my laptop, my laptop is kind of it's getting to its last leg. So I just that would that would be my luck. Is that I would get there. Um, and I wouldn't have a laptop that works and I don't have any of my stuff if I do it all in PowerPoint. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh gosh. Oh, I have to look at that one. I can't see it. Ugh. Oh, Fokker. Yes. <laughs> you are flying the Fokker DR1. I don't know the reference. I'm the only one who can keep a straight face while saying Fokker? Probably. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> I like the one, the ATC thing where it's like, oh, you'll be behind the Fokker. And the other pilot goes, oh, I've always wanted to say this. Got the little Fokker in sight. <laughs> it's a movie, Meet the Fokkers. Yes, I have seen that. It's been a while. So I derailed you. What is this slide about? We're on the Pito tube. So um, uh, we're, we're not on slides. We're just on images. I haven't made a PowerPoint for this one yet. We're doing operation of systems uh, right now. Um, we're currently talking about our instruments. Um, and yes, our first ones we're talking about is our pitot static. Yes. Uh, okay, a uh, little tip about the whole teaching thing. <laughs> You've had an instrument conversion, see if I'm going to No, I'm not. See if I just single use that. Yes, and that's the thing. If 
if you're taking anything away from from this, it is to yes, tingle your thoughts uh, and take you into further research into um actual uh uh official sources, uh actual CFI and such. So yes, you have your phone, which also has Google Drive. Oh, excellent. Okay, fair. And that was your second option. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for saying that because. I will make sure to do that now. Yes. Third option, call a friend you shared the slides to to share it to your instructor so you can use his iPad. Okay. All right. I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those uh, suggestions because I. it does. It kind of terrifies me a little bit. Um, you mistakenly thought the Piper Warrior had a oh, pressure carb instead of a float carb because it has a different checklist than the Cessna. And then you learned a ton about carbs. Yay. We went over the carbs. Um, uh, the one that I fly is the float carburetor, so I don't know about the pressure carburetor. Um, but yes, the float carburetor we did, uh, uh, our flow is about. Yes. So you're a good, good teacher because you just learned, <laughs> I've had that right! <laughs> See, this is why I need to read faster and respond faster so I understand the context of these things. I'm sorry. Anyway, okay, so pitot-static. We're on the pitot-static, so we'll go back just a little bit. Um, so as we talked about, ignore the indications on these instruments. I didn't get a proper one. So just airspeed indicator, attitude indicator, uh, altimeter, turn coordinator, heading indicator, vertical speed indicator. Uh, Different ones are on different power systems. Um, so pitot-static, uh, that system is for our airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, altimeter. So our pitot tube is here. Our static port is here. What our static port does is it senses our atmospheric pressure. And first one we'll talk about is our altimeter. So then we have our boop. Here we go. This is what it looks like. Here's our altimeter, and that's what's inside. Um, so the changes in atmospheric pressure affect how the wafers compress, um, resulting in our altitude indications. So we put our current altimeter setting, um, which rectifies our deviation from international standard atmosphere, uh, to our field elevation, or whatever the setting is. Wait, hang on. Yes, to our field elevation. Uh, hang on. So we set our... Sorry. This is why the way that I have this um, written, it makes me say wrong things. So we set our current altimeter setting, and that should indicate our field elevation. If our static port is blocked, um, it will the altimeter will continue indicating whatever altitude at which it got blocked, um, regardless of any change in altitude. Um, it, and in order to uh, fix that or get around that, we can use our alternate static. Or if that doesn't work, break your BSI. One of the things, too, is uh, the aircraft that uh, I fly apparently doesn't have an alternate static, but I'm just not going to bring that up because he's not going to know until we get in the plane. So, and then, oof. Oh, oh, wait, sorry, what? So, heats air, puts it under pressure, generates static. No, 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 no. Oh, so um, this is just, it's just a little port on the outside of the aircraft and the air moving over it, um, it just, it senses that outside pressure. And yeah, that's how that, how that goes. Yeah, nothing, nothing to do with heat, um, uh, only to do with, so, so, okay, so static being, um, not dynamic it's it doesn't change i mean it, it 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 does but it's not moving if that makes sense sorry <laughs> and if i'm saying wrong things someone pipe up <laughs> this is why this is why again again this is not learning things this is me practicing things and y'all watching the struggle can you break the vsi i don't know can you <laughs> just punch it or or i think the other thing is like um a lot of fuel uh sorry for that gesture fuel you know the two the tubes that you uh, um without doing that a, a tube it is a tube and you sump the fuel from the wings um it has a 
uh, uh, screwdriver on the end, and you can uh, break it with that. Uh, moving on, sorry. <laughs> Knew it, excellent. What about those heaters over there? Which ones? Oh, we're, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Uh, so, so again, 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 sorry. So we're just talking about the static port right here. So, so this over here, we're not getting to yet. We're just talking about the static port. So the static port goes to the altimeter. Static port goes to the vertical speed indicator. And then the static port and the pitot tube go to the airspeed indicator. So, yes. So just, just static port for now. Yes, just the pressure of the outside air. Moose is greater than ramps. Yes, yes, this is true. Yes. <laughs> altimeter shows altitude adjusted for temperature. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this an I'm sorry. I realize I'm I'm sorry as soon as I did it. It is expensive to break the VSI. So yes, likely don't do that. But if you really, really need to, emergency situation, it's gonna have to happen. Question is, are we an anti-ice or a de-icing plane? Oh, we'll get to that. That will come at the end. <laughs> um Yeah, I wouldn't really do that. Not not likely. But all the interesting looking stuff is over on the other side. Well, we're, we're getting to that patience, patience. That one threw you into a loop. Oh, the icing and the de-icing? Ooh, okay. Well, I guess we'll, I, I guess we'll see. <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of ice or uh, anti-icing and de-icing. So it's very, it's, it's very, it goes, goes pretty quick. So yeah, so that was our altimeter. So then our VSI, uh, so that is, oh, oh, oh. So v VSI comes from our, gets, uh, it's, pressure from the static port not that one sorry this one yes so vertical speed indicator here this is what it looks like on the inside so it's got these little wafers as well as so there's direct uh static pressure that goes inside the wafers and then there's a calibrated leak uh which goes to the um chamber here the casing here um and so that direct pressure that goes into there um yeah I'll read the thing. So, yes. So the direct pressure versus the recent pressure because of that calibrated leak um, causes differences, which indicate that climb or descent. Um, so direct static pressure is going into there and direct pr static pressure is also going to here. But because it is calibrated, um, whatever the pressure is outside here is going to be different than what is in here uh, with uh, climbs and descents, and that's what indicates our climb and descents on here. Um, it is in it, it indicates trends, and if it gets blocked, boom. So, oops. So if that static port again, if that gets blocked, um, it's simply just going to indicate zero, even if you're in a climb or a descent. You mean you're a PPL, so flight into IMC wouldn't be advised. Tis not, tis not. But if you were in an in, inadvertent IMC, then maybe you would need. Static port that bad? Potentially. Potentially. Yes. Seen a few CFI train uh, speeds by covering all all the instruments. Not sure about that, but it's good to use all the senses. Yes. Can tell the cruise power by the pitch of the engine at 2200. And that is something definitely that I need to work at a little bit better. Because <laughs> I do. I like, I like cross-checking those instruments. And I remember when after my commercial check ride... I went and flew with number one instructor. I hadn't flown with him for a while. Uh, went and flew with him so that I could do right seat uh, flying in my home airplane. Um, and he 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 got a little upset that I was using the instruments so much, and he covered all of them. And yeah, it. I'm I'm definitely on the um, the outer edges of. I can definitely tell like climbs and descents, like major ones, if like by the engine sounds and stuff, but those little bitty, little bitty changes, I'm still a little, oh, <clears throat> oh wow. About him getting upset. Oh, but it's good though, because I, I am, I definitely do need to figure that out because even my instructor now he'll like, he'll be looking out the window and he'll just test himself about, um, like he'll say a speed and we'll look at the speed and it's exact most of the time or just like a couple of um, things off, a couple of miles per hour off. And I do not have that ability yet. And if I'm teaching people, I should. So, yeah. Flying right seat would be so weird to you at this stage. Yes, it is. It's very weird. But I'm, I'm getting better. Definitely getting better. 
Nice. I know it is. It's uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. I do have to practice more. Definitely have to practice more though. Um, yeah. So pito, <gasps> we're on to the fun stuff. Here's the pito. So the pito senses impact or ram air plus the static pressure. So airspeed indicator, the static from the static port and the static from the pitot tube cancel out, leaving only the ram air to indicate our airspeed. So what it does is it relies on that differential pressure. If something gets blocked, say the static port, um, it's going to indicate higher air speeds below the altitude that got blocked um, and lower air speeds than actual above the altitude that it got blocked. Because if the aircraft is below where it got blocked, the um, static pressure here does not cancel enough of the blocked air pressure or the trapped air pressure here. Um, and above this static pressure, hang on. Sorry, the static, this, the static um, pressure here doesn't cancel enough below. Yes, that's, that's, that's correct. I'm going to have to fix that. Yeah. The static, the trapped static pressure block, or sorry, cancels, doesn't cancel enough <laughs> of this stuff because you're below the um, static air pressure is, um, higher below the altitude here and if it's above um if you're above where it got blocked then this cancels too much of the lower pressure that this is sensing if the pitot tube gets blocked um if the tube it itself gets blocked the airspeed indicator will simply indicate zero because this is still um sensing static uh, pressure. So just the statics cancel out. There's no ram air pressure, just indicate zero. Um, if both the tube and the drain hole static port get blocked, um, then that traps the pressure inside here. And it, so that means the, uh, the airspeed indicator will not change with speed changes. Aha. Uh -huh. Question mark. Um, but it will act as an altimeter during climbs and descents. So it will indicate a speed increase with a climb, which is wrong. Usually you see a speed decrease with a climb, but it will indicate a speed increase with the climb due to the greater difference in pressure um, from here to here. And then again, it will decrease with the descent due to the lesser difference. In order to fix this, uh, we don't have, we can't do anything about the static port. Um, oh, well, okay. I mean, apart from the things, there's no heating. There's no heating. If it's ice, there's no heating. Um, so again, we, we punched the VSI or did alternate static. Um, but for this, if there's ice, um, we can put on our pitot heat. If it's something else, can't do anything about it. And then once we're on the ground, hopefully, we take it into maintenance. We're not doing anything with that. So yeah. Um, sorry. Hang on. Ha. Ah. Pito sounds so dirty. <laughs> Honestly, all systems and maintenance stuff. We were we were talking about that earlier. It is. It's, I don't know what it is. Hello, old schooler. How's it going? Good to see you. I hope you're well. How are you? Your advice. Go watch. These, if you have time. What are we watching if you have time? Oh, I think you sent me those two. Yes, I haven't gotten to them yet, but I have them saved. Yes, saved. Thanks. Yes. Sky Eagle Aviation does hour long videos over the whole fact. I love that one. And it's what you listen to while doing stuff or driving or needing extra help. Yes, absolutely. That is. That's awesome. Anyone a PPL student, if you want to message your email, you want to give Google Docs. Have made to give out links to items you use for the truck ride. <laughs> Perfect. Just going to say that it will act. And I'll do it. Yay. See you too. And I'm sorry. I haven't, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm comfortable, like, asking questions. <laughs> Like, what do you think would happen, non-students? Um, 
yeah i'm 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 just working on making sure i got m my own knowledge down but but yes yeah, sorry at, at some point maybe I'll, I'll 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 do something like that what's the difference between the static hole and the static port uh one is uh here on the outs one is here and one is there so that's it <laughs> sorry um that's the thing is they're meant to cancel each other. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I didn't do? Oh my God. Here. Sorry. Sorry. Here. Look, look. So this, st the static air goes into here, into the case where the Ram air and the static air there go into, um, the diaphragm. So the static air from here and the static air into the case from the static port cancel each other out. Um, like they, put pressure on each other sort of thing. Um, and that just leaves the Ram air to, uh, create, um, the differences, uh, for the speed. So does that, does that answer your question? Okay. Here's the thing. Static hole to drain fluids. I brought this up to my instructor and he was also confused. So going through this for this, we have the, the, the ram air here, the, 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 the pito hole here, the static hole here, drain hole here. I have only ever seen one in terms of a pito tube. I've only ever seen one hole on a pito tube, which we considered the drain hole. I've never seen specifically like a static hole. You know what I mean? So is there actually a difference or why is why why that's my question that i haven't actually looked into enough to get an answer for myself so you know what i mean good excellent i am i am also i am also well we're working on operation systems and we're gonna do some fundamentals of flight in a in, in, in a while oh my god in a little while um and then i have a, si a singular uh, story um, of IRL flying once we get there. So, yeah. Yeah, pressure thing. And there's rainbow as well. See, I, j I, 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 I even looked. I even looked on the one that we have, and I only saw the one. So, do you want, do you, want you guys to ask questions? Mm, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> like, 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 like. Don't like overly test me because we do have to get through this yet. <laughs> um, but I'm d I definitely would like to practice being able to answer questions. And you guys have been asking questions, so that's that's good. So you have a pigeon mask, so can't say much about it. That's your problem. Okay, so it's good. <laughs> Went over that in the Piper Warrior pre-flight, but you forgot the details. Okay, sounds good. Might just be different designs. Fair still has the same effect. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. So yeah. So we'll 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 just we'll just go with that. <laughs> I think you're right about the static hole meaning static port. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean that's yeah. That's what it's got. What's what's got to do. So yeah, yeah. Remember seeing them, but your pito looks a little different. A bit different from the Cessna. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Think you might go for a night cross country soon. Excellent, excellent. Just for the funsies, or you got a destination in mind, or well, yeah, I guess it would have to be a destination. Going to get the Borgor or something. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen sparrow? I don't know. Are you talking European or oh god, which one is it? I haven't seen that in a while. European or uh, North American, African, or European? It was one of the eight. That one. You'll hold up the questions till you get a check right date. Then you go pick my brain. See, here's the thing. I, I never tell when I'm going to take my check right because it's a, that's, that's so much pressure. But I'm um, ch. <laughs> ha. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just like that. I don't know. That. That. that I feel like that that kind of freaks like telling people when it is like kind of freaks me out even more. So you'll find out afterward <laughs> one way or another. But yes, um, at some point we will have to start adjusting things as I get them revamped and all that. So 
We'll see. As we get closer, as we get closer, you're going to start packing my brain. Watch out for deer. You learned that the hard way. Oh, no. Okay. Yes, definitely. Uh, story? Just for fun, plus for future consideration, some, some jobs require X amount of knife cross country. Mm, interessante, interessante. Seems like there's more to that statement. Okay, yes, fair enough, fair enough. Good to know. Okay, cool. All right, well, I do. I hope it goes well. Um, I, I have, yes, my, my story involves a little bit of night, so I will, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, have you, we, we talked last week, I guess it's, were you able to fly this weekend? What day is it today? It's Monday, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be a long week. Um, just don't bust on your top pilots like you. I will bust on something else. I, I, I will, I will not. That, that's one of those things you learn from other people and then you make your own mistake. <laughs> Bustable mistakes. But it, it is like it happens. You learn from it and now it's over. So if you're an American in the living room, bedroom and kitchen, what are you in European? <laughs> I was def I was definitely gonna say the other one. Um, but 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 I'm a lady and I can't do that. Told you the story about how you hit a deer as a student pilot. Oh, 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 on your first night flight. Uh I'm I'm trying to remember. It's been um like <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to remember how it ended. I'm sorry. I don't have, like, uh, yeah. So so much in the brain. And I can't find things in there. I have to organize the shelves. Haven't gotten to it in a while. You know the answer, but won't spoil it. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Did I spoil it? Eighth on pylon sound tricky. You really shouldn't know about that, but you cheated. And looked at the back of the book. Is it really cheating if you're bettering yourself, though? In in the context of learning things. And they are. They definitely can be. Um, doing the CFI uh, will actually do that. Um, that was the maneuver that I decided to do, do the ground lesson for. So I have a little nice PowerPoint for that. Um, and to be honest, I didn't realize... We'll, we'll get... Well... I didn't realize that it, 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 if you do it, if you do it correctly, you end up, um, descending and climbing at regular points. And like, you're actually supposed to descend and climb throughout the maneuver. So I, that didn't register when I did it for my commercial, but for the CFI, like it did now, like learning about that. Yeah. Actually going through it. Yeah. Learn that. So, yeah. Not really, you need a lot more time before you consider a flying crew. Okay, okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, for future reference. Yes, figure eight pattern, but it was almost a month since you did them, so you screwed yourself. Which again, learning opportunity. Your instructor busted. On Power Up 180, he said he would shun you if you busted on that. Oh, so, okay. Did you actually have to do the Power Up 180? Oh yeah, I heard there can be big delays in scheduling a checkout. Yeah, oh my god, I was supposed to I was actually so Oh no, I'll have to do it tomorrow. I was supposed to text my DP today to see what the schedule was like uh coming up. Um I'm 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 not saying that it's going to be soon. I'm saying that I need to text him now cuz it's probably going to be a while. Yeah. Oops. Uh ha, oops. Been a while about the story. Long story short, the deer exploded and you were handed the bloody transponder oh my god <laughs> that's just the best way to put that the deer exploded and i was handed the bloody transponder <laughs> you got a good story out of it the uh the checks get more and more uh yes is uh i th i think i'm sorry i'm be i'm behind again so i don't remember what we're Best part about having a PBL, uh, about being a PBL student is everywhere you turn, you learn something new. 
and as a commercial student, and as a CFI student, and next student, and when you're an airline pilot, you're always learning something new. <laughs> Descend and climb on the check ride based on winds, honestly. Right, zero winds equals fair. Yes, zero change because your speed stays the same. But is it likely there's going to be zero winds? Probably not. So, you're a hobbyist. Respect the pros. Respect the pros. Yeah, yes, yes. But, but, uh, like, sometimes it's nice. Just... Just having it as a hobby. <laughs> it's not so, uh, what's the word? Stressful. Sometimes. But yes. Try to save $300 for an extra flight because you, yeah, because you busted, spent $1,200, ripped your already empty wallet. Did a slip to landing in a power off 180, but your landings have always been bang on, so you weren't too worried about that. So, but I thought, like, you didn't have to do a power off 180. So was that just a DPE thing? PPL check ride 800, save I 1600. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's what you meant. Sorry. Yes, yes, they do. They do continue to increase. If you have enough money to buy one plane, you have enough to buy two. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Had zero wins on when you busted your see much check ride. That's the one provision you were. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Again. Learning opportunities. <laughs> Can you maybe get back to the bit where the answers were Monty Python quotes? If only we're understanding that bit better. Sorry. Well, uh, oh God, I do. I need to watch that again. It has been so long. You know that thing is PG. Really wanted to show it to the small ones, but it's one of those, what, 80s PG movies? So it's not allowed. How the movie? We're getting it. We're getting it. Yes, DP thing for me as a stickler for, oh, DP thing. He's a stickler for landings. It's why, oh, his failure rate is high. Oh, okay. Okay, fair. Okay, fair. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not going to have to do a power off. <laughs> if, 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 if it works out with this DP. So, okay, okay. All right. So, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, that was our airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, our altimeter. Let us go back to here. So this one we've taken care of. Boom, boom, exit out. Altimeter, boom, boom, exit out. Vertical speed indicator, boom, boom, exit out. Um, gyroscopic is our next one we're going to talk about. Um, we have two principles of gyroscopes, which is precession, which means that the gyroscopes will tilt and turn due to an outside force. And the second principle is rigidity in space. It means uh, it spins in a fixed position in the spinning plane. Um, the vacuum, um, gyroscopes are our attitude indicators and our DG directional gyro heading indicator. Again, do not look at, do not, uh, bother with the indications of these. They mean nothing. Um, so attitude indicator and heading indicator, directional gyro are, are on our vacuum system. <clears throat> this one. So, yeah. So we have our vacuum air filter and then air comes. That was probably really <laughs> charming, um, but it, it paints a picture, doesn't it? So we got air going in through our uh, directional gyro or heading indicator going through there as well as going in through our attitude indicator with our vacuum relief valve here and our vacuum pump here and then uh, sends air out that way. So we also have our suction gauge, um, which indicates how well our vacuum system is working. <clears throat> and that vacuum air, that, yeah, that vacuum uh, environment, um, uh, or cre that vacuum pressure or creates an environment for those gyros to work. So uh, this is kind of a, words I can't say because I'm a lady, um, diagram, but... I looked for the other one and I couldn't find it. So, um, <clears throat> or a more detailed, more, uh, a clearer one. Couldn't find it. So, um, we have our turn coordinator here. So we have our gyro here. See, see, see. Yeah. Creates an environment for the spin and the aircraft movement provides the force, which then creates the indication on here. Uh, same thing there. Um, and then. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. 
I mean, yeah, that's that's what it was. The vacuum, the vacuum pressure um, creates an environment for those. Did I not have those? No, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. Backing up. The vacuum system goes like this, goes in through here. That system creates an environment uh, in which the gyroscopes can spin, and then the aircraft movement provides the force which um, uh, uh, turns and tilts the gyros, which creates the indications on the indicators. Our turn co coordinator is electric, electrical gyros. Um, <clears throat> and the difference between turn and slip and the turn coordinator is it is both direction and the rate of turn and is the same as above. The electrical system creates an environment for the gyros to spin. Aircraft movement, um, creates that tilt and turn, which causes the indications on the indicators. There. Sorry. Um, again, it's been a while. <laughs> um... Back on track, everyone. Yes, I'm sorry, but I'm having such a good time talking to you guys. Slowly but surely, we will finish. We will. We are, we're 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 getting we're getting there. We're almost done. We have two more things to talk about. Alas, you must go to bed. Sounds good. East Coast time. I know. I did. I'm sorry. I started late, but I I didn't. I didn't realize how many pictures I had to find. So and plus, I'm just really bad at time. So. Thank you for being here. Uh, it was great to see you. Have a great video. Thank you. And see you next time. Um, yes, it will probably be. Yeah, we're hopefully going to be on um, Tuesday as usual. Um, if not, I guess I can throw that in there. I think I think you're in there. But yeah, this discord. I'll let you know if uh, I uh, um, change things again like I did uh, today since it's Monday and we usually do Tuesdays. But yes. Have a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. Otherwise, just have a great week and a weekend. And yeah, see you next time. Sleep well. Um, all the good things. It's 12.30. Need to go to sleep. Oh, yes, it is. It's little. And we still got to fly. Of course, don't actually fly. Even simple planes. You just watch movies doing so. So probably a long way behind on the understanding. But th that's the thing. Is like, uh, I, I, do, I do need to be able to explain this stuff to people who don't have that background so if it isn't if it isn't um understandable then that is an issue on my part again this is a this is a rough draft and i haven't practiced it in a while so um take that as you may um but also it, it is it's definitely um a, a me thing so yeah so so it i, I hope it's at least an, an entertaining and i hope you find something that not to learn but if it's like, oh, that sounds interesting to go and look up from official sources or get from um, people who actually know stuff, uh, yeah, that's that's also a thing. The suction noises are cracking you up. I'm glad. <laughs> I I'm glad I did. As I as I did it, I was like, oh, that probably sounds strange. But um, y yeah, then I continued. So as it is, get more suction noises. You missed them. <laughs> Need the full understanding of how this system works and you can't comprehend without the noise. I mean, that's the thing. As I'm going through my FOI, what you're, how you learn is through what you perceive and how you perceive is through your senses. And if you use more of your senses, which includes hearing, you're going to learn better. You struggle to learn things without getting hands on. Right. So your comprehension didn't start until you started flying the real planes and putting everything together. Exactly. And that's the thing, too. Because I started uh, ground school just like reading through the entire fact. And then doing that, I had certain mental understandings of things that once I got into the actu actual plane, uh, definitely had to adjust things. So, and that is another thing too, where with these, I do need to figure out more hands-on um, options for doing things. So, oh, so one of the, uh, one of the things like for, instead of doing this picture, sorry, not that one, this one, instead of doing this picture, uh, no, I'm not going to do that actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, taking to having a picture of what it actually looks like in the plane. Um, so getting that, um, real world connection sort of a thing. So, yeah. 10, 10 suction noises. Yes, I'm glad. My CFI check ride when I go full of power. Make sure to yell, give it the beat. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I think that's a reference. I don't understand. I'm sorry. But I will definitely say that in my head so he understands more. 
Hello, how's it going? Good to see you. Standard airline ground school explanation. Works great, costs lots of money. Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, I, and, and that's the thing is, with with my own experience in ground school, it wasn't it wasn't sitting down and doing and listening to lectures and having my CFI talk to me about stuff. It was more I learn as much as I can. And if I have questions, then we talk about that after um, afterward. And we were around planes. Um, so, again, my home airport and. How much guys? My home airport, uh, they're doing the stuff right there. They're working on stuff. We go in, we're chatting about stuff. And so there's planes, just all sorts of like in various states of maintenance. So he would bring me over to a certain plane and then we'd look at that. And we, if I had a question and then we'd, yeah, yeah. That hands-on stuff, it really does. It does get that um, better understanding rather than just like, yeah, the book, book, book stuff. <laughs> Whole system is becoming obsolete. Oh God, what did I say? Oh, oh, the 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 ground ground school stuff. <laughs> mm, potentially, maybe. Uh, not a reference. Uh, your two year CFI mentioned he would. Oh, he would put you into the ground if he heard "give it the beat" <laughs> when going full. Oh no. Okay, sounds good. Well, I I will I will. You'll have to remind me of that so I can think that uh, during my check ride. You left me CFI homework reading material motivational linked in my Discord. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I am looking forward to it, but also slightly concerned. I will. I, I, will, I will check it out. I'm excited. Uh, okay, so final two things. So environmental. But da, 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 we have vents. Yay. We have vents that uh, open here, and they open from the outside. They let in cool air. Um they're most effective in flight because air moving faster. Um, and then we also have a uh, air thing here. And then we also have cabin heat, um, which uh, I, I have the thing. Sorry. Um, not that one. This one. So uh, air comes in through here. It gets cold, fresh air vented over this shroud or yeah, shroud passes fresh air over hot exhaust pipes, heats that up, gets vented Oh, yeah. So exhaust gas from engine is here and that fresh cold air is getting vented over that um, uh, that, that, that thing. Yeah, that the pipes. Yes. Sorry. Words are freaking hard. So there's a shroud around the hot exhaust gas pipes and cold air is going over those pipes and getting heated up and then that gets vented into the cabin. So nice hot air. However, if there is a crack in the uh, exhaust pipes, that can lead to venting CO, carbon monoxide, directly into the cabin, which is an issue. So be aware of that. Um, have those carbon monoxide detectors in the thing in, in your cockpit. Um, and if you smell exhaust, that is potentially the, well, other than the detectors, the smell of exhaust is potentially the only way you're going to know right away ish if carbon monoxide is happening. So, yeah, be aware of that. D and or and D de icing and anti icing. We have defrost, which vents heat onto the windshield. And then we have carb heat. Boom. Oh, not that one. Hang on. Not that one. Hang on. I think I have it in paint. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, shoot, hang on. Um, I want this down a little bit more. I want it in the center. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, the vacuum system, fair, not needed with the glass panel, and even with planes that currently have it, can be upgraded to a GI-275 or an AV-30 that would eliminate the vacuum system. Uh, The 150 that I fly does not have a vacuum system. Uh, I need to look quick. 
For some reason, I have 30 sounds familiar, but I don't think that that's what it is. I wouldn't know, actually. So, yeah, so that that is that is um one of the one one of the things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's fair. Um, I think the only thing is like electrical potential issues, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exhaust manifold. Yes, that, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do words today. G5 is another popular one. Okay, okay. I, I'm ugh, I'm so bad at knowing models of stuff. I don't even know play. <laughs> Only what I fly. Kind of. So, carb heat. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yes. So, in here, the lowered air pressure in the Venturi, um, uh, plus fuel vaporization creates a very cold, uh, 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 atmosphere or environment in this area. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so usually, uh, uh, air, sorry, sorry, hang on, let me, so usually through the air intake, air is coming in through here, cold filtered air is coming in through here. This door is over here and that cold air is coming in through here. This is the carburetor. This is the Venturi, um, the butterfly valve that goes into the cylinders. <clears throat> so that Venturi, um, that low lowered air pressure, fuel vaporization creates a uh, very cold, even colder than the atmosphere, um, little environment there, which can lead to carb icing. So what we do is we pull that carb heat out that boops that door there. So um, unfiltered air comes through here, gets vented uh, th uh, through the heat exchanger, um, which bloop comes in through here, heats uh, that carb ice, hopefully, removes it um, and allows uh, that um, uh, unimpeded fuel and air mixture to go into the engine. However, things to consider about that is uh, it's going to, because it's melting ice, uh, water gets, uh, uh, yeah, water then goes into those cylinders, uh, which will then lead to a rough running engine. So just be aware of that, as well as um, that warmer air causes lowered performance and the air is unfiltered through this way. So... Um, keep that in mind. Oh, and then we have pitot heat and we talked about that. So there's our de-icing and anti-icing. And that is our systems. So where are we going? I'm really bad at, um, I don't have outros. Good Lord. Moving outward. We're going to find <clears throat> one that's not in there. Oh my gosh. Oh. I think we're going to have to go over here. <clears throat> we haven't been down there in a while. No. What do we think? Is that what we think? What about this one? It looks nice and small. <clears throat> oh, wait. Oh, I was going to try it. <laughs> nah, nah, screw it. Kerf. Do we like it? Graham? I like it. I like it. Um, so speak now or for Oh shoot, I can't do that. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. I have to turn everything else on. We're getting in the sim. <laughs> Yay! Um, but did I stop it in time? I did not stop it in time. Gosh, darn it. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Crush it. Sorry. I feel so bad. All right. Now I need to start this first, then that, and that. Don't need that. Okay. Goot. La la la. Perfect. Oh, that's going to annoy me. There. Okay. That is good. Little nav map is up. Um, am I doing VATSIM? I'm not doing VATSIM today. 
not today. We are doing um, fundamentals of flight flows because where did I put it? Oh no, where did it go? Here it is. I did that uh, last week, um, which I'll talk about. So I actually have a plan today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that was that was so much fun doing that last week um, with Stu two two two. We worked on our pattern uh, flying them as well as uh, instructor flows, kind of. Um, but yes, today t today we're um we're 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 just working on our on our straight level flight climbs and descents and then turns, climbing and descending. So I don't think we need to bother anyone with that. Plus, it would make me nervous. So yes, uh, we are getting in the sim. Don't need that. I don't need that. Flight sim. Boom. 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 All right. Checking to make sure all the things are good. I know. I'm sorry. Continue in normal mode. That was my fault. Um. Yes, I will tell a story. Not hearing anything. You better not have some uh, in installation to do. I d I checked that. Changing some settings. There we go. Don't know why it changes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, so. Um. So again, for anyone who doesn't know, um, I am a pilot in real life. I have my commercial certificate, and I am currently working on my CFI. I know. Frightening. <laughs> but we're working on it. Um. Uh, most recent lesson, uh, so yes, so my instructor was supposed to be leaving earlier, um, for he has, uh, a, uh, a, it's not an airline job, but it's an ATP, no, yeah, it kind of is, I don't know, um, he has, he has a job, uh, that he is going to training for. And he was going to be leaving earlier. But now that he's not, I get to... We were going to Kerf, right? Yes. Um... Yes, so now I get to, uh, we still get to fly now, and now I get to, went through all of the ground lessons to get those, get through those, and now I'm starting to work on, like, putting together flight cards so that I can remember them and just really practice them and get the flows down and be supervised uh, with them from my instructor. Have I been flying recently? I did. Uh, just just the once, but it was sort of like a it was a double a double thing. So, um, so yeah. So first, what, oh, actually, first what we did it was almost a triple. So first, what we did is I have been I need to get spin endorsement for CFI uh, training, and so I had been hounding. I went and did my first spins with um, one of the owners of my home airport. He's an ex he's an excellent pilot. He loves doing spins. He just does them regularly. <laughs> he'll just be, he'll, if he goes flying, this is what he said. If he goes flying, most of the time, he'll do some spins. Um, he's not an instructor, so he can't uh, sign me off, but I got to experience someone who actually likes spins. My instructor was not looking forward to it, not looking forward to it, not looking forward to it. And we went and we did them. Um, first one, he, he, <laughs> first one we did um was it went fine second one was he he said afterwards that was the best one out of them uh both of those to the left and then we did one to the right and the the right one right ones are always i say always like i know things but when the one time i did them with my 
with the owner at my home airport, the right ones were really difficult to like get into and kind of ish to control the way you wanted to just because the the, the plane wants to go to the left, left turning tendencies. Um, sorry, let me fix this. Bing. Um, so hello, hello. <gasps> Look at oh, beautiful. So yeah, so then on the one to the right, um, what was I doing? Oh, that's what, nah, no, it's fine. <gasps> beautiful, beautiful. That's not what I wanted. No, 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 no. Boom. It seems a little windy. I'm concerned. Um, yeah, so then we did one to the right, and the what what he said afterward, it seems like he told me it seemed like he told me to recover earlier than the other ones. And I asked him about it and he said, Well, the thing was is your airspeed wasn't stable. <laughs> so, like the other ones. Your speed's supposed to stay the same, and your rate of turn is supposed to be going. But with the right one, the rate of turn wasn't really increasing, but the speed was. So that, why is my propeller moving? Sorry. Uh, so that's why he had me. Is it me? What is happening? That's why he had me recover earlier. And so that was kind of, oh my god, it's really, <laughs> I don't know why it's bothering me so much. Oh, shh. <laughs> um, 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 I have made a terrible mistake. We might have to go clear weather. So, yeah, so. So the thing was, is I, 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 I want, I want more experience. I want more, um, I want more training on the spins. Um, my instructor does not want to do any more than that he really doesn't he really does not like spins so i'm gonna have to do it with somebody else uh and get that endorsement so i'm still not spin endorsed did some more spins in a little bit of a feistier plane and again that was uh we definitely got higher um in the speed range on recovery um so that was uh interesting so yeah so that will be at some point we'll do that again that will be another story for another time so we'll start doing this and then we'll get to the other stuff. So pre-flight, we take a picture of the hobs and the tack because that is how we know what we're supposed to pay. Uh, and then we, uh, battery goes on. Pito heat, we're going to turn, uh, oops. Did I forget to put those on? Oh no. Nav lights. There is a potential chance that we have a wasp in the pito tube. Wrong button. All right, red, white. Are you doing the blink blink? Nope, I think we have a pop at the circuit breaker. Let us do the check sings. It is a pop at the circuit. Sorry. Pop at the circuit. It's fun. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Pop at the circuit. Oh, it's uh from that one show. Uh, Did the things. Fuel. Um, uh, grasp the pito tube, feel that heat, turn it off. Oh, so yes, with that is, we, we, we test our pito heat to make sure that we will have anti, uh, sorry, de-icing, or anti-icing, I guess, um, in the air. Part of our pre-flight check. So, if I could get in closer, uh, uh, I think right here, this little roundy bit, um, that is our static port. Uh, so we make sure that that is clear. It just has a little hole in the middle. So we make sure that that is clear. Then we have our vents here. We make sure those are clear. Pito tube, make sure that is clear as well, well as our static slash drain hole. Um, our fuel vent here, make sure that that is clear. Uh, we go out to here, check uh, the, the bolts and wiggle that rod a little bit. 12 bolts there 
screws. I think they're bolts. They're bolts. Um, and then we check the flaps, those connections. Wiggle that rod a little bit. Then we drain a little bit of fuel from here. We tip that uh, uh, sump tube. Uh, make sure there's no water bubbles at the bottom. Check for any sediment. Get that out of there. Um, <clears throat> check for that nice light blue color if we have to. Hold it up to something white. Uh, and then give it a little sniff to, again, make sure that it is, in fact, abgas and just for funsies. Um, wheels. Check those. Make sure they're at a good um, pressure as well as similar pressure. Check our antennas, baggage door, if we have one. Um, check the elevator, those connections. Rudder, those connections. Then the trim tab. You can lift that up. Check those connections. Check more antennas. Um, make sure the fuel caps are on. You got a couple sunset flights in recently. Nice, nice. Uh, was that kind of planned, or was that kind of the only time you had to get out there and were they beautiful love sunset flights those are oh, nice. did did you do sunset into the night flight uh then we go uh, uh, oh and then at that point uh chicken uh my f mock student you can do the other side so then we do the aileron and the flap and wiggle those rods and that thing something that sump the sump the uh, fuel and then if i if i said oil on this side i'm sorry i sometimes do that where i say oil when i mean fuel and fuel when i mean oil so and then so did that side now we have why is it turning is is it is, i feel like that's not correct not correct at all so we have this little uh door here we pop that open uh, sump a little bit of fuel from there and then we open that oil take the dipstick out check it out wipe it down put it back in then we pull it back out again to get a proper reading make sure that that is at uh, above four and a half let's properly check it just in case five point seven looks good I did tell about the oil leak. Yes, yes, I did. Um, and then, oops, sorry, sorry. And then if the propeller would stop moving, we could check the leading edge of that for uh, cracks or nicks. Um, if you got an alternator belt, make sure that's nice and tight. Exhaust port, make sure that's got no wiggles. Um, air intake, make sure that's clear. And boop, put your hand up for clearance on the nose wheel. And then we check our checklist to make sure we did not forget anything. And we're going to, hello, ducky, fuel up now before I forget. Kind of planned. Didn't go, oh, didn't go into night flight. You already had an hour or so in. And to make the landing count, right, fair. Required you to wait a bit. Fair, yes. Okay. I have a question. I think I kind of know the answer, but it came up again. Um, for myself anyway, <clears throat> um, when I sat in on a private, uh, check ride, uh, pre sort of a going over stuff, night takeoffs and landings, right? It has to be takeoffs and landings. So if you were to take off before an hour after sunset to an hour before sunrise, and then you went and did three landings at night, you would have to take off again, right? Technically. And then land again. Then you just have three, ta three night takeoffs and four night landings. Unless you logged it differently. <laughs> right. I, I, I do. I believe that's the thing. Cause the, um, the, the student that was going to take his private check, private, um, check ride, he said, no, it doesn't technically have to be takeoffs or whatever. And I was like, no, I don't think that's quite correct. But I just sat quietly because I was just observing. Um, but it did. It made me question that. But so you did, you got, you got all night current then. That's always good to do. Sometimes you, uh, sometimes you can forget and then 
stuff happens, and then, oh no, you're not current anymore. Oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, did all the things. So now we can start the aircraft. So, uh, or we can do the thing. So, fuel is on, trim for takeoff, uh, uh, circuit breakers, but a little, 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 uh, and then we actually check them and not just but a little, little, little. Did have one already popped, so good to do, good to know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, rudder, brakes, and pedal test. <clears throat> um, If we lose uh, seatbelts on at all times, exit out the doors to the left and right. We're going to make sure they're shut and locked. Uh, um, uh, uh, shut and locked. And no talking during takeoff and landing. If we lose power on the rollout, we'll stop on the runway. If it is after takeoff and below 1,000 feet, we'll land straight ahead. If it's above 1,000 feet, we'll consider turning around landing back on the runway. Look at that windsock. <laughs> I am frightened. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Technically. And they have to be full stop landings. Right. Yes. Hello, how's it going? Yes, here with the, the, the things. 61.51B1. No person may act as pilot in command of an aircraft carrying passengers during the period beginning one hour after sunset and ending one hour before sunrise unless within the preceding 90 days that person has made at least three takeoffs and three landings to a full stop during the period beginning one hour after sunset and ending one hour before sunrise. That's that's exactly what I thought. I, I kind of wish I would have said something said something but thank you thank you by the way um now i feel bad i haven't actually heard whether he passed or not i hope i i hope so um but yeah that was that was one of the things where i was like um well and he did he seemed very confident about it and i was mm, i don't know and then there was another thing that he seemed very confident about that was also mm. and then that made me just go um like <sighs> again it, for 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 private, I know I know that I did not know all of the things at the time. So just like as a CFI, eventually, I do worry a little bit that I'm going to be expecting too much right right away at least. So yeah, we'll we'll see. People forget the takeoff part, right? And that was the thing because he like the student specifically said. Yeah, you don't, it, not technically takeoffs or whatever. And I was like, uh, that doesn't sound right at all. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I will. I'll have to find out. Um, he wasn't my, my instructor's student. So I, he's, he's the only person I like regularly talk to over there. So I don't know. Well, we'll see. I'll ask. Um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, and then we do the thing, and then we seat track back and lock, back and lock, chicken. Autopilot's irrelevant, carb heat is out. I keep saying that, like, I mean, carb heat is off. Carb heat is off. We'll just say that. Carb heat is off. Carb heat is off. Um, beacon goes on. Prime it. Badoomba. Badoomba. Mixer full rich, throttle goes slight, brakes, clear left, clear right, clear ahead, clear back, clear prop. There are tactful ways to interject right, but uh, like, uh, uh, I, uh, I do, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not at all in the, I know what I'm doing, uh, mindset at all. Like, even the, um, so his CFI was my CFI's business partner. They're, like, the two instructors in their little part 61 thing. Um, and he even said, are you ready to, to me? Because I was, I was sitting there waiting after air tours. And he said, um, are you ready to conduct a ground lesson? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> so I just sat in and he would. Ask me if like there was anything or bring anything up or if there was yeah any anything and th there were a couple things that I said 
but I, it was also like in that, in, in, in that setting, I get so nervous that I, I'm not, I'm not thinking the right thing or going to say it properly. And then I'm just going to mess things up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still getting to that tactful part. Uh, weather. Weather. I am. <laughs> Yay. We're at 24. Uh, Kilo, Romeo, Papa Hotel. The 21st at 0555 Zulu. Uh, it, uh, mm? oh, um, it is most recent. Automated, 340, 1-6 gusting, 2-4 knots. I'm concerned. 1-0 statute miles. Visibility scattered at 2,800, broken at 3,400. Overcast at 4,300. Source ceilings, 3,400. 12 degrees Celsius, 7 degrees for Celsius for our dew point. Altimeter is 3012, remarks AO2, differentiates precipitation. Temperature is 12.3 degrees Celsius and 6.8 degrees Celsius for our dew point. 3012, 340 for our wind. Oh, I guess I can put the thing in there if anyone is interested in puffing along. You've had to deal with egos and musicians for years, and you have a thousand passive-aggressive ways of suggesting someone is in air. Okay, okay. Sometimes it's not worth the churn, but there are times in aviation where it's so mission critical. And that's what I kind of worry about. Because, that, that, to be honest, that was, that was how I had just met this student, and he definitely seemed sorry i'll put this in there he definitely seemed a little more um what what was the word that i used it was i, I want to say like cocky or arrogant but like it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like at like that level it was just kind of like like a bit like definitely very <laughs> that's sort of an idea um and then i could pin that i guess and there were certain things that when i it, there were certain moments where i did interject something and it didn't quite seem like he was willing to fully absorb it it was just like sort of like the oh yeah i know that sort of a thing or i'll get to that sort of a thing and i, I don't know it was it, and it just kind of was like well that's just not somebody i want to be teaching you know what i you know what i mean but i know i'm gonna have to so yeah uh, yeah yeah that's definitely going to be a i am i'm, I'm very much a, if i don't have to deal with that type of personality i'd prefer not to so that will definitely be a learning, learning curve. So if you got tips. <laughs> uh, and, and, and yeah, like I'm not, I'm not, again, when CFI, I'm definitely going to be the uh, taking care of business sort of thing. It's just, I just don't want to have to deal with them. Send them to someone else. Make them someone else's problem. <clears throat> but if I have to, I must. Okay. Are we... Where was... Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. I need the thing. Oh, my God. See, it's kind of bothering me because we have Kilo, Romeo, Papa Hotel. And... Romeo Papa Hotel kind of reminds me of something. Um, December y, but we can't do December y things. Oh, I need to turn this on. Um, or make December y references yet. Ralphie. <laughs> because we have a week, a week and a half ish, week and a half ish. And then we can start doing Christmassy things. Okay. Are we on? There we are. Okay. Found us. We are going to go. Um. 
Well, we're just doing normal stuff, so we can go. We'll go westish. We'll go westish. Yes. Time for you to catch some sleep. So sleep sounds good. Have a great night. Sleep well. You have a great night as well. Sleeping. Um, have a great rest of your week. Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and hopefully see you next week. Um, yeah, all the good things. Also tough to sit in as an observer and being observed to see, wait, hang on, to see, to sit in as an observer and being observed to see if you catch the error. Right, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, like, like it is, I'm still at, I'm still in the mindset of I'm still a student as well. So I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to enter. Inner, yeah. 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 Yeah, so I don't know. Bring it up in the debrief. Hey, mind if we look up those recency things? You're like not on the same page and your understanding might be off. Take a look at 6151. Oh, fair. Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely fair. I do like I know I know there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a major still gonna be major learning curves even after I get to the point where I can actually pass a check ride um, but yeah dealing with all the different personalities and stuff and like it so going through the FOI one of the things that I thought was uh, somewhat interesting was when they brought up using using negative what was it negative motivation including threats and something else for only so again separating it um don't use that for anyone but the most impulsive what was the other word impulsive and was it aggressive or arrogant learners so I was like, oh, I guess, well, <laughs> there's the in. If it's necessary, it's freaking necessary. But yeah, similar to I must be playing it wrong. I'm playing an E flat major there, but everybody else is playing an E flat minor. Can we listen to that quick? Fair, fair, regret. Uh, yeah, yes. I don't know if they use that in the specific, um, in the specific, uh, at least, at least on Shepard are, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, and, and that's the thing is, I, I, ha I haven't, I haven't been very social in a while. That's so bad. And part of the CFI stuff is very social, being able to uh, deal with people. Where are we going? Three, six is best for wind. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna figure out where three six is. Oh, do I wanna do that? Three six three four zero zero three. That's twenty three. That'll be fine. Huh? Nah, we'll back taxi. We will back taxi. Um And I guess that's kind of the thing to keep in mind for me as well is that, again, uh, oops, not going there. It's like you said, there's so many things in aviation that require humility and, um, yeah, following the rules, doing the correct things, no place for arrogance and stuff like that. So on one hand, I don't know, do I really want to teach people in that mindset? But then again, people can change and they can learn. So, and that's part of, that's going to be part of my job is finding that way to help them be the best that they can be and stay safe for themselves and 
Uh, stay safe for... Oh, shoot. Hang on. Hang on. I have to turn this way. This is a very weird... Hang on. <clears throat> this is just a very s strange... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, being being good aviation people for everyone else as well, not just not just themselves. All of us. So yeah, get in the mindset of being safe. I I I'm I'm starting to work on it. If you had an FO who wasn't ready to be a captain, you'd be chatting about it in the deep. I know I have I have realized that I I've, I've been sticking in that student mentality, and I have been trying. I'm working on getting myself into that point. But yes, it's it's it is it is in progress. <laughs> Hello, hello, how's it going? And yes, this, I, yes, yes, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am working on it. Um, but yes, process. <laughs> we'll go get there eventually. Run up. Um, fuel is on, trim for takeoff, flight controls. Oh, shoot, what did I do? Oh, what did I do? I clicked a thing. Uh, hang on. Flight controls. F9. F yours. And up. Okay, fine. I started I started doing this one with my instructor and he just shakes his head at me, but he is also twelve years old, so he thinks it's funny. Up mine. Up yours. And you're making a nice little square with it. And up ours. That's good. Our instruments are working working well. Excellent, excellent. Um, oh, and I got, I, I do, I have to watch, I have to watch that power. I keep putting too little in. That's good. Um, primer is in and locked. Mixture's best in power. Brakes are set. 1700. Oops. Carpet goes out. And back in. And one mag, and back. Two mags, and back. Uh, vacuum, our vacuum, checking that to make sure, or sorry, ammeter, our ammeter is here. It is positive, so that's good. Our, al our alternator is working. Um, vacuum system is in the green, so that's good. Whoosh. Our idle check is good. So, um, I don't know where we are. Gram, Gram traffic, Cessna Hotel Tree 1 Delta 1. Back taxi 36. Gram. Well, I gotta figure out which one is which. Hang on. Whoa. So that's two. Yes. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. Approaching runway zero three two one. Entered runway zero three two one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> if I'm observing another CFI, work with them to establish my role as an observer. Right. See if they don't mind you taking some notes and discussing that. Oh, in the debrief. I could. Oh, I could have should have done that. Clearly remember one such note from your CFI observation. That balloon was interesting. Why did it happen? Okay. What on earth? Oh, wrong button. Um, and, and, and that is, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. For, I didn't know that that was going to happen. So my, uh, <laughs> I was just automatically like, uh, no, I am not prepared for this. Um, but I did since my instructor isn't uh, leaving for a little bit yet. I did ask to go with on uh, flights um, as well as if he had any ground lessons. He doesn't do many ground lessons, but um, if he had any, I would like to go with. I should I should also ask about any other CFIs. I guess just kind of maybe the one for ground lessons. If I can just come hang out and stuff and do that. And then, yeah, I would definitely 
hopefully be more prepared and take take notes and be a little bit more willing to uh, participate maybe so lovely windsock controls into the wind well we're kind of straightish um, I think it's three four zero and we're doing three six so we will we'll do it into the wind oh yeah I was probably supposed to do that wasn't I on the taxi I was supposed to do that um, but I, I did not but we will we'll do it we'll do it now it was really bad like you think you ended up two inches shorter than what you got on the plane oh no oh no <laughs> oh and, and that's the way that you phrase <laughs> well that balloon was interesting why did that happen Okay, fair, fair, very diplomatic, I guess. During the taxi, yes. Keeping the controls during the taxi. Taxiing too fast. Oh, that was, hello, by the way, how's it going? That's not even half of my usual taxi. <laughs> I'm kidding, kind of, maybe. You'll take off now. Luckily not, L that would not have been good. We would have had serious tailwind situation. And, well, we're about to see how things might might have gone. A voice from the back seat. You, hey, check 121.5 to see if the LT is going <laughs> Slightly less diplomatic, but practical. <laughs> hello, hello, thank you, Lythal19 for the follow. Thank you for putting up with me. Appreciate you being here. We're getting to the flyings. Yes, we have done the things. We're taking off. Graham traffic, Cessna Hotel, Tree 1, Delta 1, departing 3-6. Left crosswind departure to the west. Graham. All right, mixture's full. Wait, hang on, hang on. Green, green, feels good. Landing lights on, flaps are up, trim, uh, fuel. Uh, yep. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. Nope, we're good. Just slightly. Gentle. Gentle-like. Yes, gentle-like. <gasps> oh, no! Uh, I have to reset. We have a wasp in our pito tube! Did y'all see our airspeed didn't go? Oh, okay. Can't do that. Uh, must let it uh, come to a stop. Uh, <laughs> well, we did what we were supposed to do. Uh, all right. I have to get out and get back in. Uh, can I just restart? Yeah, I can probably just restart. I think I can just restart. Do I do hashtag four landings too? Oh no! Do, do, do I understand that reference? I'm sorry. It's 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 not likely that I understand references. So <gasps> stop it! I probably should have shut down. I guess. Oh no! Frick! You know what? Um, you know what? You know what? You know what? Um. <gasps> Oh, 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 God. Fucking wasps in the pedo tubes, and I didn't do any of this stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, where's the off button? And you were serious, though, hardest landing you've ever been involved in. And you've flown out some of the west a lot. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. So, so what, 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 what actually went down in the debrief then? Uh, all these go out. Uh, I think I'm going to have to actually last time this happened oh shoot I can't do that I think I think I had to like fully go out and then come back in. So I'll just get it all set up and then we'll go and then I'll do a, uh, abbreviated pre-flight. <laughs> wow. We flying 
we thought it was a ground lesson. We did the ground lesson, uh, non-ground lesson. Ground lesson flow, kind of. Uh, yes, now we are doing flight flows. Fundamentals of flight. Gosh darn it. There. There. Liar, we haven't taken off. We couldn't take off. I don't know if you could see, but uh, our airspeed indicator was not going. No. Well, I will continue telling story. Um. Oh, oh, shoot. I have to. I have to. Frick, I need to restart everything. Yes. Out. Stop flight tracking. Good. No. God dang it. It's <sighs> what you do. You put all your pent up frustrations and rage into just a little tiny. <sighs> now I end that task again. Oh, shoot. This operation is not valid for this process. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, now we got to turn all the things on. Sorry. But yeah, airspeed wasn't going, and that is, it is, that is one of those things. It does have faults like that. If you don't put that pito cover on, um, there is uh, some degree of chance, some percentage of chance that uh, it's going to uh, give you a uh, blocked pito tube, which is freaking awesome, except when I forget to put the pito cover on. I will have to look back at the VOD, though. I feel like I did put the pito Oh, no. I bet I didn't because we hangered it last time. Dang it. Okay. Take three or four. I don't know. You address the balloon. Ask the student why it happened and what could have been done to prevent it and recover from it. Nice. Okay. Okay. And instructor let you completely handle that part. Was totally on board. Not that he couldn't have, but it was a good learning opportunity for the student and teaching opportunity for me. That is, that is awesome. Okay. Yeah. I will. I, I, I should get more of those. Um, and when I say should, I mean, I would, I would like to get some more of those opportunities. I'm planning to have a um, guinea pig student, just somebody close to me, um, that I'm going to hopefully not mess up. Um, but, yeah. Use that, see how it goes, get feedback on it. And then, yeah, hopefully get some flights and sit-ins with my instructor and his students as well. Just stick a finger out the window, that will help. Oh, yes, absolutely. Fine, just make sure to do it in real life. Putting the pito cover on? Um, I don't think... I don't think any of the planes that I have flown... Well, I'm sure the, the fancier ones were um, had pito covers, but otherwise, nope. You just check. That's why you check in the pito tube, but I can't actually check in this pito tube, unfortunately. But, yeah. So, did spins with instructor, did not get endorsed. I want to do more, um, and he does not. So, uh, I will be getting endorsed uh, by somebody else. Um, and then, I had, again, I had prepared my fundamentals of flight. Uh, uh, lesson plans. Kind of just getting stuff together at first. And then, I will, yeah, practice the flows and make it better and get better and all the things. And then we had, he needed some more nighttime. Uh, so I was just going to go with him. Cause my instructor needed some more nighttime. Um, so I was just going to go with him because I wanted some more night practice. Because um, from the right seat, it's just been weird. And I was really upset that... I had gotten better at night flying. I had, I had to solo and did solo for my commercial. But the last few times that we flew at night, again, from the right seat, I didn't feel very comfortable with it. So we went and did that. Turns out he didn't need the hours, but he was just going to help me out anyway. So we were going to go fly elsewhere, practice some landings. And 
somebody else was ramen is very good yes it is i uh i get cups of ramen <laughs> in bulk lime shrimp ramen yum yum oh i could turn the thing off so yes so we we did we had done our, our lesson and then we went and fueled up and then we uh took off again um to get some night time and we were starting to we were heading over to a different airport and another plane was in the pattern and what or started in the pattern and was practicing patterns uh so my instructor's like uh well we should just go go back to our airport let they kind of have first dibs and everything so i was kind of like oh is that what is that kind of what you do and he's like yeah it's like kind of don't uh kind of nice to just like let everybody have their own space at night so that's what that's what we did we went and practiced a couple of landings and i got more i was i was more comfortable with it i felt pretty good about it and then as we're taxiing back for did i how did i forget that that's literally the thing that we needed uh as we're about to taxi back to do another one he says all right, give me your logbook so I can go fill it out and get, drop me off and go do a couple uh, solo ones. And I, I was like, oh, God. Um, well, I was not expecting that, but um, I, I guess that's happening. So I went and dropped him off, did a couple of night seat or sorry, night seat, night solo, first solo right seat, night landings and slash flight and. That was good. That got me a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more confident. It was calm. There was moon, so it was it was good. But yeah, it'll we'll 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 get there. I just need more of those experiences, and that was that was a good one. And yeah, I think that was about it. Odo, um, you have a problem with dragging tail planes with landing straight? You go all over the place. Isn't that just like a general rule, like happening of tail draggers? I don't have my tail dragger. My tail wheel, yeah, so I don't know per se, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's a very normal problem to have, so no worries. Practice, practice, yes, definite Fs in the chat, but we're back. So Bs in the chat for, for back. So during the walk around, the sim does not have a way of spotting the defect block pito tube and correcting it. Seems like it should have that. So this is, this is its own plane. This is the, well, since. Since it came up, if anyone wants this excellent plane. Did it come through? Yay! It is a WB Sim JP Logistics 152. I love it. It has Ducky and all the good things. Um, but yeah, it's just just remember to put your Pito cover on and it won't be an issue. <laughs> um, and I usually do, but then I forgot and the, the, the thing. So, yeah. Um... Can't have more than one plane. I mean, again, you can, but I, I think it was just kind of like a courtesy thing. Um, he also knew the person, and I think he might have been sort of a tentative pilot. So it was just kind of a, um, yeah, yeah, definitely just a courtesy thing. What up, what up? Uh, the plane will be in a little bit. It wasn't. And then the sim also wasn't, and then uh, my uh, blood pressure is. But, but, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. Mixture full rich, throttle slight, all the things. Should probably check my circuit breakers again. I don't think that they would go out again, but just in freaking case. We good. Beacon goes on. Prime it. Clear left, clear right, clear head, clear back. Clear prop. They tend to want to put the back end to the front. Yeah. Oh, no. I would like to at some point. But, yeah, it's just it's not a um not a priority at the moment, unfortunately. Because, hey, once I get my CFI and then once I get my tailwheel, then I can do those as well. What am I doing? Did the things.
Nav. Taxi. All the good things. And now, well, let's check our weather again. I'm sure it hasn't changed too much, but might as well do all the right things. Yeah, we're good. 23. All right. So now I have to find my way through this weird airport again. Back taxi. Oh, and now I have to... Gosh darn it. Did all those things. Start the flight trackings. Okay. I had been making progress on getting to bed at a decent hour. <laughs> and now I have regressed a little bit. But we are a little bit close. Um, we are going to go do the things, get the things done. And I have the things all set here. So it should go pretty, pretty smoothly. Knock on wood, cross your fingers. I shouldn't have said that. Because now it's not. Uh, Graham traffic. Cessna Hotel Tree 1 Delta 1. It's once again back taxiing Tree 6. Graham. Look at that straight windsock. Today lost some of that progress. Yes. 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 It kind of started last week with last stream, I think. However, it was fun. And this is fun too, apart from the issues. But real life stuff, that's what you got to do. Anticipate. And I should have. I, sh I should have done the thing. Um, so we should, hang on. We should be off. Oh, gosh. Much before the crossing runway, but um, if we are not, we will once again stop on the runway. Uh, if we lose power on the runway, we will stop on the runway. Um, if we lose power after takeoff and we have some runway left, we will land on that remaining runway. If we lose power after takeoff and it's uh, below 1,000 feet and we do not have any remaining runway, we will land straight ahead within 30 degrees. Um, if it is above a thousand feet, we will consider coming back to the runway. Although it's got quite a nasty tailwind, so, or it would have na quite a nasty tailwind, so potentially not. Otherwise we will potentially just straight ahead again. Uh, rotate is 65 miles per hour. Um, climb at more than 70. VX is 70, VY is 80. Climb at more than 70. Uh, keep the nose uh, below the horizon so we can scan for traffic. Climb to 1,000. 1,000 AGL at least, and continue our climb. Yes. All right. Oh, let's hope not to lose power. Well, it wasn't, I mean, it was a matter of losing power, but it was a, um, what's the word? Ah, there we go. Look at it go. C, 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 C. Um, it was uh, an intentional loss of power because of, oh my God. Because of low or no airspeed. Oh, it just feels so weird. Uh, okay, okay. I need to go over it slightly. Oops, because I keep leaning. This is normal. No, no. I uh, just need to. Oop. There. Perfect. All right. So we are scanning for that traffic. Oh, and I could turn that off so that I'm not cheating. So at 500 feet. We'll do our greens and stuff. All right, 500 feet. So, gr um, oh, for the love of God. We 
we are coming back around to land on the frickin' runway because our oil is jank. But why? This is fine. Uh, Graham traffic, Cessna Hotel 31 Delta 1, left downwind 36. Graham. Did, do, you, do you remember what I said? Remember what I said when I said that thing about, oh, it should go smoothly. This is why I shouldn't have said that. Okay, I, I, need, I need enough power to climb. I, I checked, I checked the friggin' oil. This is fine. It's not fine, but it's fine. All right, 1,000. And we are, a beam the numbers. 1900 carb heat goes out <laughs> can you see how thrilled i am <sighs> oh this is not not my day i guess let that nose come down check the placement of that runway turning on left base Let that oops nose come down. I don't understand. Is it a circuit breaker? Wouldn't that be nice? All right, uh, scan for final. Second notch of flaps. Uh, uh, Graham traffic, Cessna, hotel, tree one, delta one, final, three, six. Thank you for flight. Wasn't supposed to be in the current route for another, like, hour. <sighs> uh. Treating this as a potential power off 180? Uh, I should have, shouldn't have I? And not gotten as far out from the runway as I did. Like, I, I did. I kind of, th I, th I thought about that. <laughs> but I was like, nothing's happened yet. How l Okay, so I guess... How long does it potentially take from the time of loss of, well, and I guess that is oil, yeah, loss of oil pressure to um, bad things happening. Oh, frick, I forgot we have lots of wind. Watching that speed. Hoping for the best. Oh, uh, oh, oh, ah. oh, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> I promise I fly better than an actual plane. Okay, so I guess we'll just, uh, you know what? We're taxiing into the grass because if I can fix this with a thing. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I don't know what the... Is that plane okay? I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. All right. Honey, honey. Oh, I guess I can't check stuff. Uh, I'll... These are things that we have to deal with. That goes out, and that goes out, and that goes out. Oh, and you can go off and... <laughs> Don't stand. Open, I checked you, you are perfect. I got stop 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 So what does that mean? What oh 
Oh my god, <laughs> Jason Bateman. Yeah, uh, I did. I, I, I thought. Yeah, I thought about it, but then I was. I, I did. I thought. Um. Yeah, not adding flaps until short final. Keep the base tight with that strong. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, fair. I, I, I did. I thought about uh keeping it keep keeping it in, and then I stopped thinking that, and I should have not done that. Uh, flight lasted longer than your attention span. <laughs> well, that's good question. Not good. Could be okay. Could be seconds. Could be minutes. Depends on the root cause. Right. Well, apparently there's a leak. <laughs> Might not do anything at all if it's a bad sensor. Right. Uh, apparently it's not. What was my temp gauge? Uh, doing during all that uh it was it was it was here ish but we had just kind of started it up so i don't know um yeah so uh, um i have to poke myself in the eye that's normal okay um can i go like that and then maybe it'll fix it no um i i I think I'm going to have to restart again. Okay. Well, you know what? This is, for anyone who doesn't know, this is how it goes sometimes in flight training. Uh, yes, I know I'm parking over here. The sim, oops, the sim will not know the difference. Pardon me for not wanting to back taxi again. So yes, temperature gauge seemed, it, yeah, it seemed, it was, it was down here more, um, but uh, yeah, had had just started up, and I I think that that is the issue, and I do I have evidence that uh, the first time it was working just fine, so did I do the did I did I do the PJ yes okay <sighs> menu take I've lost count. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I, I was going to say, I did forget to say. Uh, uh, so, speaking of hard land, my, okay, so my instructor was flying. We were coming back. Where do we do? Oh, so yes. So we had done our spins, had done the practice, um, my practice, what's it? Um, the, 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 this thing coming back to refuel so that we could go do the night flying and he was flying and as he always does to me I decided I was going to um uh make him land a certain way and I was like hmm what landing should I make him do and obviously I go power off 180 and I didn't realize that I didn't look at where he was uh before I said that and he was already like past a beam the numbers on the down. <laughs> but he is um he takes challenges. So um well let's see what our oil's doing first. Um Aha, there we go. We had a leak. Five. So he committed and he he ended up coming in a, l a little bit short actually he was going to come in short so he starts diving to get into ground effect here let me get it started and then we'll taxi um mixtures rich full beacon all the things doors are shut Clear left and right and ahead and back and clear prop. Shuts the window. So I lost oil pressure. Yes. Don't think that is on an electrical bus. Looks like a bad oil sending unit. Isn't. Oh, it isn't. Oh, it isn't cold oil. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's actually funny because uh, I we did in real life. We had an oil leak uh, last week. So. The sim is listening, I guess. 
and not not i mean we also had a pop circuit breaker and then we had uh something in the blocked pito tube so what else could go wrong i shouldn't have said that because now it's gonna take it as a challenge anyway appreciate y'all bearing with me we're gonna get this There's our royal pressure. Mm. So yes. Uh, electrical things. Pito heat is on again. I think it's because I keep clicking things I'm not supposed to be on. So, uh, as my instructor does, if he's coming up short on a power off 180, uh, he'll dive into, into ground effect, and that'll give him a little bit of extra, uh, a little bit of extra distance. And I even had a thought. I was like, "Wow, that was. This is a more aggressive dive than um, uh, he's done before." But I was like, "Oh no, it's I'm, he knows what he's doing," and um, he starts rounding out and boom <laughs> and my uh graham traffic says no hotel free one delta one back taxi tree six for the third and hopefully final freaking time but who freaking knows at this point thank you for flight um yes um impacted very much before uh intended <laughs> and the whole <laughs> and he did he came back up and he floated, he floated all the way to the, to the thousand footers. And my face the whole time was just, and I, I did, as, as soon as we actually like landed, I just started cackling because I was so freaking surprised. And I feel a little bit bad because like, I know he, um, I, I'm sure he wasn't too pleased with himself for that one. And yes, yeah, I think um, he, he, he cracked a couple of jokes. I think the one was, was that the uh, longest, longest bounce you've ever seen? And uh, he also blamed this, the spins we did earlier. Uh, he, he's not calibrated anymore <laughs> um, from the spins. Uh, but yeah, that was. It did. I, I didn't. I didn't want to give him too much crap about it, but like, because I know he knows, and he knows I know, and I know he knows. Yeah. But it, it was. One of the things that it brought up for me was, again, it really gave me that you, you don't trust anybody. Like, even, again, your best students can surprise you. So, yes. Hello there! How are you? Good to have you here. How are you? How is it going? Um, we have, have uh, are not new here. This is our third time going here. Hopefully, we aren't going to have another issue. Scans frantically. We'll see. We're about, we're about, we're gonna get into the air now. We're doing it. Right, Graham traffic, Cessna Hotel, Tree 1 Delta 1, departing 3 6. Left crosswind departure to the west. At least that's the intent. Airspeed indicator is alive, it's alive! Oil pressure, temperature, crosswindy stuff. Okay. This seems promising. Cross your fingers. Knock on wood. Okay, hoping for the 500. Yes, it is. It is good to have you. Uh, so, so, sorry you're coming in on this mess, but we're on track now. We're going to go do some straight and level flight, some climbs and some descents. And some turning, climbs and descents and turns, and I don't know if I already said that. Yeah. All the things. Fundamentals of flight is what we're working on today. Thank you for the follow, 
Ronak401. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. If you're willing, what is your aviation story? Sim story. All of the good things. As for me, I am a pilot in real life. I have my commercial certificate, not airline. I am currently a CFI in training. Frightening, I know. Um, and that's what we're working on. I did a, oh, no, no, that'll be fine. Um, my last flight lesson that I prepared, rough draft, was the fundamentals of flight, because that's your basics, that's what I, uh, I'm going to start with as a CFI for students. So that is what I figured I would go over with my instructor. Let me check here. 2,500 we could do. That would be good. Ooh, that looks... What is it? So, okay, <laughs> I was getting a little bit paranoid about the uh, pr oil pressure, but yeah, 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 yeah. As you may see, we've been two hours, oh my god, it is, isn't it? Oh, almost three. Oh, well, I guess, uh, I, I, guess, I guess ground lesson flow was an hour, and then yes, two hours on the ground uh, uh, trying to get in the freaking air. Yeah. You're from India. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. Just completed your DGCA, similar to FAA, theory paper. Hopefully starting practical lessons in one to two months. Excellent, excellent. Uh, for funsies, or are you going into career for it? And how did you get into it? I have all of the questions. Yes, how did you get into aviation? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Curious and interested. So yes, um, we'll get started. I am going to leave that there. You know what, I'm gonna turn it a little bit as well. There, that'll help better. Ooh, I'm not gonna say that. That's not ladylike. Uh, okay, this, this, okay. So we're going to get up to 3,500. We're going to talk about first thing. First thing we're going to talk about is straight and level flight. So first thing to keep in mind is you're going to maintain your scan at all times. We are visual pilots here. So, oh, and also disclaimer, learn nothing here. This is not, this is not instruction. Um, I am not a CFI. Uh, if anything piques your interest, go research it from official sources or talk to actual CFI and such. So yes, yes, this is this is not this is not a place for learning. This is for me to struggle as I attempt to learn to teach. You live near an Air Force base, and also you happen to try a fixed base simulator, A320, and also air crash investigation got you into aviation. Nice. Um, is is that a like like Mayday, the show? I love that show. Or do you have a different one? Okay, there. So as you can see, we are in straight level flight. Uh, what? Wrong. What? Button? No. Okay. There. Okay. It is 1 a.m. there. Yes, time to. Thanks for playing air. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, thank you for being here. It's always good to see you. I do. I apologize that it's it's so freaking late for my uh, initial lateness and then all of the issues. But, but, uh, happy to have you here. Sleep well. Um, and all the good things. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great uh thanksgiving or just week and weekend and yes all the good things yes the show yay uh okay so um have have you watched all of it i think i got oh i got to where they started adding like the trains and the boats in and then i haven't been able to continue um 
since. And then I've seen sporadic ones. Was there one that stood out to you specifically at all? Okay, so we're going to turn back this way just because, like, clouds over there and such. Um, bringing this down, checking the things. I'm so freaking paranoid now. We're going to turn off our taxi and landing lights. Oopsie daisy. I will do my reading in Discord. I shall, I shall, I shall. Definitely. Thank you. And talk to you later. Enjoy. Because uh, your dad was a pilot and took you flying once. And now with MSS, your passion is at its peak. That is. That's so awesome. There are. There's just. There's so many different stories about how people got into it. It's so interesting. Hearing all the different ones. And that will get. Yeah. We, we, yeah, everybody's different journeys, everybody's different stages, levels of interest, areas of interest. So cool. Okay, so again, first thing we're doing, straight and level flight, fundamental, maintaining our scan. We are visual, um, clearing our area. Am I getting rain? Shh, we're fine. We're going to turn again this way. Clearing turn, yay. Honestly, at this point, I'm, I almost want to just. <sighs> turn the weather off because I, I don't. I don't want to have to deal with it. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll try to hang in there. So we are, we're going to be spending most of our time in cruise. So we want to make sure that we're doing it safely, efficient, efficiently, and accurately. So in this aircraft, uh, I'm using the, what I use in real life for that aircraft in real life. Um, so ignore uh, the actual settings. For this one, as you can see, or you would see in that aircraft, we're at 2,500 for our RPM. Our attitude how our airplane is oriented in space. Uh, we're establishing and maintaining with our primary flight controls here and here. And we are trimming to relieve control pressures. I hate the trim button, so please bear with me in that respect. So we're keeping our wings level with our yoke. We're holding our altitude and we're going in our proper direction. So uh, we're going west. We can set with our heading our altitude at this point, just leave it at 2,400. That's fine. That's normal. Bring a little bit of power and that'll help. Um, yeah, we're at, sorry, 3,500 because I can read an altimeter. Um, yeah, so we're maintaining our westerly heading, maintaining our 2,500 foot altitude, um, and ma making sure our wings are level. So we set, we can set it with our instruments. So west there, 2,500 there, and uh, bank with our attitude indicator, as well as our turn coordinator. Um, but then we are VFR pilots, so we look out in the distance and we can aim in that direction. So like, there's like a lake, it looks like right there. We can aim at that lake and if we start uh, shifting one way or the other, we can adjust and maintain that uh, track. Um, and then once we're at altitude and trimmed out properly for the love, we're never trimmed out properly in the sim because I hate the trim button. And then we hold that sight picture. Uh, the uh, horizon is going to be a certain uh, space or a certain distance from our dash. And if it, if that movement it, or if that space is decreasing, that means we're nose high and climbing. So we need to adjust for that. If that space is increasing or increasing, that means we are descending. We need to uh, bring our nose up. Yeah, and then if we need to, we can retrim. Bringing that back again. Oh, sorry. Um, 
You think the oh oh god is it is it contest? I've never Qantas contest. A380 all engine failure was the most interesting to you. I'm trying I'm trying to remember if I've if I've seen that one. How about me? Oh um, so I first. It was on TV while I was first starting my training, like two, coming up on three-ish years ago. Two and a half, I guess. Um, and some of the first ones were, I'm not going to know the actual planes, but I think it was a, um, it was a plane coming into Canada and there was a, um, there was a storm and they ended up overshooting and that was one of the ones that got because uh, of because of all the water and stuff and then that was one of the ones that got the uh, the uh, emergency arresting system like how they started implementing that um, the the hijacking that the guy ended up uh, ditching. He had to end up ditching because they wanted him to fly to Australia, but they didn't have enough fuel and he couldn't convince them. He couldn't, or yeah, convince them that they don't have that much fuel and ended up ditching. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess those two were one of my, like a couple of my first. So that's why I remember them the most, I guess. So which one, which one was that one? It sounds familiar, but I can't, I can't put it in my mind. It was tense. Perfect example of CRM. So, so amazed. Is the flight speed important or just make it trimmed at specific RPM? So when you're trimmed at a specific RP, okay, hang on. Let me think before I answer this. For a specific attitude and a specific RPM, you're going to have a specific speed. I think. So, I mean, yes, your airspeed is necessary. That's one of the um, things is you're maintaining uh, your heading, your altitude, and your airspeed within a certain degree. Uh, hang on. Oh, regardless of airspeed. Uh, or n no, like that is, that is a uh, part of the thing is, um, yeah. So, so basically it's like you're setting all the stuff up and then you're maintaining that. So you can, you can also use your speed if your speed is increasing from what you set it, what you had it set to when you configured everything that also tells you that your nose down, if it's decreasing, also tells your nose up sort of thing. Oh God, what are the standards for maintaining straight and level flight? Um, plus minus 10 degrees, plus minus, shoot, uh, for private pilot or commercial pilot? Because I feel like it's plus minus 200. No, sorry. I'm Okay, I'm currently working on the instrument stuff, like the instrument basic instrument maneuvers and the unusual attitude so I could be wrong I'm just I'm just gonna go with plus minus 10 degrees of uh, heading plus minus 100 feet for altitude and plus minus uh, 10 miles per hour for or not uh, for uh, speed you saw the Concord crash investigation it was interesting and which one was that Concord was also very interesting to you hopefully supersonic flights would be back soon um I, I assume that was on a, that was not on Mayday, or was it? If I don't know it, my brain has a muscle repeat over and over. Yes. Uh, hey, trip wheel, brain will hit. Oh, but it, uh, its actions are what make me hate it. <laughs> Try for 21 to love my trim wheel, never can do without it. I love the actual trim wheel, but the trim button, this trim button does not do what I want it to do. It is rebellious and I don't like it, but that's fair. That's fair. Yes. The ditching one, Tenerife one. Yes. Also sad to see 500 plus people died because of the KLM and the Pan Am not turning in their taxiway. 
Okay, it is the plus minus 220 and 10. Gosh darn it. I, I did. I, I thought that, but I had forgotten. So I should add that in there. Okay, okay. I do have a qu I do I do have a question though. So on the FOI, the the Shepherd Air thing, it brought up um it's an it's an older version of the the question is based on an older version of the uh instructor's handbook. But it said don't don't introduce the uh ACS PTS standards until the 3 hours of prep that you do for the check ride. And then I was like, I definitely don't remember that number. I would have like thought about that a bit more. And so I went to the uh, actual reference and it had changed to something like don't, don't bring it into the training unless or until you start prepping for the check ride sort of a thing. But yes, I, I definitely should put that in there and just color it to uh, bring up later on. I am. I'm starting. I'm starting to utilize colors in my um, uh, even my flight lesson plans. I'm a color coordinator. <laughs> Thanks, so wise, Odo. Oh, no. uh, unless you're talking to somebody else, like Charlie Foxtrot, he is very wise. Uh, I am not. <laughs> Listen to nothing that I say. The Concorde Hydeo, the supersonic jet from Air France. Yep. Secondary surveillance radar after that incident was a major add-on to, oh, to aviation. That sounds fun. I, again, again, I am really bad at, like, knowing types of planes and stuff. Uh, like, like yes. I, I'm bad with names in general. So, like, na yeah, even names of planes. So, sorry. Important to establish that as a standard to meet the objective of the lesson. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yes, fair, 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 definitely. Um... And I guess, okay, and I guess that is, that makes sense because in my mind, I was just kind of like perfection, but that's not going to happen. So yes, got you. Okay. I will, I will, I will keep that. I will keep that in mind and I will add that in. Thank you. Uh, Cessna doesn't have a stall strip like the diamond aircraft, does it? Um, I don't know. Um... I know the one plane I fly has a... Oh, no, that's a stole kit. Um, oh, I don't know. The con I know! The, well, okay, yes, but also... Eh? I, I, it's definitely come up, but it's not in the brain. I know, I know. Okay, again, I only got into aviation. I was going a whole different way in my life. And then I went a different direction. And then in 2017, uh, I, I went to an air show and was like, huh, that'd be fun. And then um, started taking care of an elderly relative who had been a pilot uh, in the 50s and 60s at the end of her life. Uh, and then uh, that kind of solidified it. And, and, and then I started training two and a half years ago. So 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 that I'm new. I am I am baby when it comes to like general aviation stuff. So yes, I know, I'm sorry, again, it's come it's come up, but not yeah. Planes in general, tube and two flat surfaces equals plane. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Sometimes the flat surfaces are up here. Sometimes they're more this way. And sometimes there's two of them. Oh, don't necessarily have to tell the student the standard. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Something that you can keep in mind when coaching them to use their references to maintain them. <gasps> Got you. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. So, so yeah. So, it's like if they're getting off like just like a little bit, maybe like a hundred feet, maybe not. It, it's not as bad. Like, uh, but like once they start getting like a lot, then it's like, okay, now we're going to have to start correcting and okay. Okay. I like that. Okay. That sounds good. Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah, so we are, we're visual. We set it with our instruments. We're maintaining it visually, periodically verifying with our instruments. If you need to make corrections, make sure they're small, make sure they're gentle. 
If you're properly configured, that should be all that it takes. Common errors is improperly trimming. So that would uh, make, make it so that if you're trimmed <clears throat> uh, incorrectly, uh, you're going to end up uh, climbing or descending. Air speed's gonna adjust. Um, improper power setting, you're gonna be less efficient. Over controlling, you're just gonna make things worse and it's going to fatigue you, especially in longer stretches of flight. Um, if you're relying too much on your instruments or too, too much outside uh, the aircraft, um, you're gonna have issues because um, your sight picture may change slightly and you may have to make adjustments uh, that you might not necessarily be able to tell entirely with your visual. Um, and hang on. I might have to rewrite that bit. So yeah, so you might not notice slight changes in sight picture that uh, will cause uh, great adjustments in your actual state of your aircraft. And if you're too much outside, you're not looking at um, uh, other things in the cockpit as well that you should be uh, monitoring. <laughs> much practice things I have to do. You can see that, okay. Think the cra Concorde crashes 2000. I will, I will, I will, I will look at it. I will, look, I will look it up. I will look it up, and I will pro. You know what? I probably will. I'll probably be like, oh yes, that one. I just don't. I didn't know what it was called. I'm sorry, but yes. Apologies. Thank you for putting up with me. Right. If they're 300 above and below, several teaching opportunities that can get them under 200 or better. Right. Without saying you need to stay within 200 feet. I mean, realistically, want them want to get them to zero right and that is and that's yes that's that's like one of the things that i do worry about about that like um we're gonna turn again um yeah sitting in on that one that one lesson like that's why i wish i did know whether or not he actually passed because like if he did if he passed i, I pro probably did um then it, it just kind of gives me that reference of it's not your students aren't going to be perfect the pro the private certificate is a license to learn um and just yeah really knowing how much i need to be yeah like keeping them in line after its crash, the Concorde had its last flight in 2003. It does. It, it, it does. It sounds, it, sounds, it sounds familiar. <laughs> Sad, though. Okay. You were flying a friend around this weekend. Was it awesome? I'm, I'm sure it was awesome. And basically was doing this with him. Two hands on the yoke, fixating on the magenta line. Couldn't tell why he was all over the place until you got him to use the two fingers, use trim. And look the heck outside. By the end, he was nailing it. So, you getting that practice in? <laughs> For future reference? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that is. That's so fun. I did. I let a couple, couple people. One person I let just kind of fly, and he didn't really w want to. Um... Then another person I let fly and kind of like coach them just absolute basics, not in training or anything. Um, and it was funny because she was so proud of herself for like looking at the attitude indicator. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it was like, no, you got to keep your reference outside. But again, again, it wasn't for actual uh, flying or anything. So. All right, yes, you held it level. Yes, sim pilot. All right, so climbs. This is going to be, you know what? I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't. We're doing the thing. Unless, hang on. Ugh. I'll try turning around, and if not, I'm just putting it on clear. Clear skies.
Yes, yes. We have a climb checklist that we can do. Um, I forgot to take a picture of the one in the 150. But we clear our area. So four climbs. We want to make sure that we're not going to run into anybody. Um, plus, we're going to be nose high, so we won't be able. We won't have. We'll have limited uh, forward visibility. So um, we can uh, uh, make calls so that people know what we are doing. Uh, we can do shallow banked turns as we climb. We can just lift our wings so that we can see if anybody is coming from any direction, um, and generally maintaining our scan as. Um, as much as we can with that limited forward visibility. So, reasons why we have to climb, we probably have to get to straight and level, so we have to climb. Uh, otherwise, we might have a new assigned altitude or we generally choose a higher altitude for better conditions or other reasons. So, for our climb, we always go, we go power to full for our regular normal VFR climb. Power goes full attitude um, is going to be based on our uh, airspeed. We'll talk about takeoff first. So for takeoffs, we'll be at 70 miles per hour VX or 80 miles per hour VY. And we'll be trimming to relieve control pressures for whatever constant like airspeed that we're doing. Again, constant airspeed, we're pitching and trimming based on our airspeed indicator. Uh, if we do constant rate, another option, is then we are pitching and trimming for our VSI. So if we're doing our VY climb, we power goes full and we pitch up till we get to our VY. Um, I think VY in this is 75. Sorry, I'm just gonna go this way a little bit, but that's just, you know what, no. <laughs> I don't wanna be dodging clouds there. Whoa! I should have known. Oh, and now I have to... Gosh darn it, hang on. There. Okay. So! Now we can go wherever we would like. Excellent, amazing. Anybody here on the plane overshooting the run runway in Tonkantin? Um, 2008 still is a big thing in Honduras. Didn't we, 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 um, we went and saw that in the sim the one time, yes? Another one of those things where I'm sure I've heard. But names elude me. It was great. You were laughing after about how doing a three airport cross country used to be a major ordeal with nerves and everything. Always feeling like you're missing something. Now it's like day of flying. It's fun. Yeah. Aw. If we're at cloud bases, maybe do a descent first. I could have, but it were in the sim. So uh, 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 I'm just going to turn it off and I'm going to go. That, that, I guess that was. That was definitely an opportunity for... Um, flexibilizing the lesson plan <laughs> but our weather is clear now so we're gonna do it like that oh god what's happening when we climb um we are um uh 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 uh, uh excess thrust or <laughs> Is that what you're getting at? Because um, I get to that eventually. So, yes. So, again, we full power and we pitch up for our VY, which we'll say is 80 knots. It's not 80 knots. It's probably like 75, but 80 is the number that I use, so. So yes, so we're maintaining our airspeed. We're trimming for relieving any control pressures, but I'm not going to because, yeah, we're maintaining our um, bank angle, holding our heading, and we're 
getting to our altitude. I did, was supposed to adjust this a little bit. Um, we're gonna start uh, pitching, pitching down, lowering our nose, uh, about uh, taking our feet per minute, um, divided by 10 feet from our altitude. So if we were at uh, plus 500 feet per minute, divide that by 10, we would start pitching down at about 50 feet from our intended altitude. We'll hold our altitude with our yoke, uh, letting our speed increase and stabilize, and then we can configure for straight level flight. So bringing that power back and trimming to relieve those control pressures. Making sure we're maintaining our heading all the good things. So yes, so I had, uh, I, I, I did a silly and I did straight and level flight, climb, descent, and then level off. Uh, so I will have to adjust that to have the level off in with the climb. Yeah. Correct, but simplify. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Consider starting from what's happening with the forces when you're straight and level. Oh, okay. So yeah, so when we're in straight and level flight, um, our... Oh, I can't do that. I was I was gonna go outside the plane, but I can't do that in an actual uh, student situation. So, um, all the forces of flight are equal. So our lift upward, our weight downward is equal. Our thrust is equal to our backwards drag. So when we initiate a climb, um, our lift is temporarily greater than our weight. So then once we get, um, that's what gets us to start the climb. Once we are established in that climb, we uh, come back to equilibrium. Lift once again equals drag in a steady, continuous climb. Like that? Kind of. <laughs> um, yes. So we can also, uh, like on takeoff, we, if we want to maintain our forward visibility, if we don't need constant speed, constant rate uh, for our climb, if we can, yeah, if we can, if we want more forward visibility, our lowest climb airspeed is 70 in this aircraft. So as long as we're above 70, we can bring our nose below the horizon um, and be able to scan for traffic. So we wanna make sure we're holding our aiming point uh, out front if we have that forward visibility um, or just holding our heading and maintaining our coordination with our right rudder so yeah common errors being improper trim um, that's going to make things difficult uh, make us have to fight the controls a little bit improper trim sorry improper power is going to be inefficient um, and continued climb needs excess uh, thrust. So if we don't have that, that's why we put full power in most of the time as a general rule um, for climbs is so that we have as much excess thrust available as possible. And not enough right rudder um, at those lower air speeds. Those left turning tendencies are more pronounced and higher angles of attack. Uh, so the aircraft is going to want to um, uh, be turning to the left and we don't want that so we maintain that coordination yes so if we increase lift without doing anything else what will happen increase lift let you rephrase how do we increase lift increasing the angle of attack which can either um lifting the yoke and adding power. Adding power. <laughs> For the ore. And then a descent. <laughs> We're going to get down a little bit. So, uh, we also have a descent checklist that I'm supposed to put um, into as well. But I haven't yet. So, again, want to make sure that we're not going to descend into anyone so um, make any calls necessary we can turn a little bit lift some wings lower some wings 
check things, generally maintain our scan. We're going to have better forward visibility than in a climb, um, in a descent, so that's nice. At some point, we got to come down. That is why we practice our descents. Uh, we also new assigned altitude or better conditions at a lower altitude. Those are our other options. So configuring our power. Uh, our mixture goes full rich for our descent. Bring our power down to the uh, bottom of the green arc. This one is at 2000. And we're going to establish and maintain our attitude with our primary flight controls. Maintaining our heading and or aiming point. And we're trimming to relieve any control pressures for a constant airspeed or rate. So again, we'll be, if we want to do a constant airspeed, we use our ASI, our airspeed indicator, sorry, for that. Strange. Or we can do a constant rate, which is 500. And again, we start raising our nose general rule uh feet per minute divided by 10 from our target altitude oh sorry i misdid the thing again i forgot that i didn't have the level off where I needed it to be. And we're going to hold, we hold again our altitude with our yoke as our speed stabilizes. And then we configure for a straight and level flight. Power at cruise and trim. Improper trimming is one of our common errors. Um, as with all, it will be doing things, our aircraft will be doing things we don't want them to do, and it will be fatiguing as we're fighting the controls. Um, improper power, uh, could make it an inefficient descent. It could also be uncomfortable, uh, and or dangerous. Um, and if we are not maintaining our, um, whatever constant we have. Because if we have too much power and we're not maintaining a constant airspeed, we can have too much airspeed. And that can, yeah, that can be dangerous for the aircraft. And not maintaining our heading. We uh, want a nice, straight descent in this instant. And then one that my uh, instructor uh, told me to add in is not doing the checklist. And that is what can then cause errors. Sorry. Um, angle of attack is the only way. And power. Sorry. Yes. Angle of attack and power. Uh, am I getting to increasing thrust? Did did I not say that? Yes. Um, so we, yes, for the descent, we brought power back. And then we start leveling off and increasing our power. And actually, for that one, I will. I'll have to write this out properly. Um, instead of lifting the nose, we could just increase that power. At least to start. But yeah, I'll have to redo that one and put the level off in with the actual climb slash descent. Um, I'll go over the level off just to make sure. So yes, uh, I had in there doing, doing the cruise checklist. Um, had those. Maintain straight and level flight at desired altitude, speed, and heading. Common errors in the level off, abrupt control movements, uh, overshooting or undershooting, uh, desired altitude, uh, improper trim or trimming too early, oops, can cause that overshooting. Um, also fighting the controls and inefficient uh, reconfiguration. Other thing instructor mentioned and noted, uh, don't let them fly the airplane with the trim. 
So, like, instead of using the flight controls, the primary flight controls, to reconfigure, they just, uh, students will just trim it out once they figure out that trim is awesome. Um, so, yeah, something to, something, to, something to think about. I'm pretty sure I might have had that at some point when I started discovering how great trim was. So, yeah. Yes, about getting the student to understand the relation right between pitch and power, energy management. I will have to go, I, I did, I, in, which one was it? I think it was the, yeah, the fundamentals of flight. And I did go deeply into that because I did, I loved that, the whole uh, equation sort of, like breaking it down into little equation. But that one, I def that was one of the first ones that I did, so I definitely need to revamp that one and might have gone a little bit overboard or made it really too complicated for how it needed to be. So, yeah. If you increase angle of attack without increasing power, going to slow way down, and of course, it may not be able to avoid that to an extent. And I haven't thought about this in a while. When I first when I, when I was going over that one, I got so stuck on the, like, why specifically you needed to increase the power. Because there was a thing, the, the, the sources that I was looking into... I'm trying to remember. So, okay, okay. So, like, hang on. I am going to go out just to make sure. Hang on. So, like, again, just pitching up, right, With without adding power, it's slowing you down, right? But you're still climbing. So the, oops. So you will still climb to a point without excess power, but if you want to keep um, your forward speed as much as possible. That's a big part of the addition of power as well, question mark? Also add about the thrust to weight ratio. Not with beginner students, yes. And and that has, that has been like a thing for me. Cause, cause you do, you have to, hang on, let me figure out where we're at. Trying to figure out, hang on, I have to turn around. Trying to make sure I have everything in like a lesson plan that I might need for any type of student but then being able to differentiate between the bits that don't necessarily need to be in there for, again, yeah, beginner students. Um, yeah. Because it does. Sometimes it feels like I'm adding too much in or putting too much in because I'll be thinking of like, okay, for a private student, but then it's got to be like, okay, I also at some point or – yeah, I'll also be teaching commercial students, so I need to have that stuff in there. So, yeah, that's why I started co started color coordinating. <laughs> so turns, our final fundamental of flight, turns, climb, yes, straight level flight, climbs, descends, and turns. Factors to keep in mind: um, in a turn, we are trading some of our vertical lift for horizontal lift. So we're losing a little bit of that vertical lift. Keep that in mind. Um, and we need to be coordinating all of our flight controls because all of them are involved in turns. So first we'll talk about level turns. So we need to clear our area. Um, so we're maintaining our scan, 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 scan making any calls that we need to. We can also 
Um, say we're t turning to the left, we can lift our wing in the opposite direction and make sure that we're not gonna be turning into anybody. And then we can begin our turn. Um, but again, as always, we're VFR. We're always maintaining our scan. Reasons for turns. Gotta change direction. Or if we need to get into a proper wind correction angle, we can just do an itty bitty mini turn. So configuring, you're gonna anticipate the turn with the same rudder. So if we're going to the left, we're going to anticipate um, a turn, a, um, we're gonna put just a little bit of rudder in to maintain our coordination at the beginning of the turn and then just maintain coordination uh, throughout the turn. We're gonna roll to our desired bank, let's say 30 degrees with our attitude indicator. Uh, and we're going to maintain, and again, maintain coordinated uh, rudder input. Um, and we're going to turn the other way. So again, we're turning to the right. So a little bit of right rudder going that way, maintaining our coordination. We're at 30 degrees. The angle, oops, we're going to bring our elevator up as well to maintain our level of flight because of that loss of vertical lift. Um, and if necessary, we add a little bit of power in. So we're gonna pitch and power to maintain our altitude and airspeed. Once we have established our turn on the instruments, we're gonna look outside. So we will hold whatever sight picture. So our 30 degrees level flight, that angle should be about, that angle between the horizon and the cowling um, should be about 30 degrees. If it is getting bigger, we are nose down, which we are because we were we got a little high. Not too, too much. And if it is decreasing and moving away from its spot on the cowling, that means we are nose high. So we're maintaining based on our outside visual references, um, verifying periodically with our instruments. So let's say, so we're gonna roll out on south. We're gonna start the rollout half our bank angle in degrees half of our bank angle from our desired heading. So our bank angle is 30 degrees, divide that in half, that's 15 degrees. We wanna start the rollout from our desired heading. Common errors, neglecting rudder on our roll-in because that, uh, that is adverse yaw. which I guess I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily need to say, to say adverse to it. Hang on, maybe. Yeah, the nose is, the nose is gonna wanna go in the opposite direction of the turn. So we need to put that little bit of rudder in at the beginning of that turn to compensate for that. Um, oops. I promise I fly better in an actual plane. Uh, too much or too little back pressure or power is going to lead to climbing and descending in that turn. And we don't want that because these are level turns right now. Not maintaining coordination leading to slips and skids, which can be dangerous. Uh, not recovering our pitch and power at the end of the turn, which can lead us to climb. Overshooting or undershooting our heading and abrupt control movements versus smooth and deliberate. So there's our level turn. Climbing turn, yay. Um, so again, so this is, it's a climb plus a level turn. So you have to put both of them together. So climbing turn, we're scanning, watching, we're lifting or lowering our wing, depending on if we are high or low wing. Seeing where we're going, seeing if there's anybody in our in our way. Um, we do these in the pattern and we also do them for efficiency. If we have to change direction as well as get to a higher altitude, we do both. So uh, configure, we go power on full for our climb. 
put our attitude to our desired bank and set it also for our constant either rate or speed. So let's say we want constant speed. We're at our 30 degrees, maintaining our coordination. <laughs> kind of getting to our airspeed. I decided last minute that I wanted to do constant airspeed, my bad. Um, so yes, and then once we have that set, looking out the window and trimming to relieve our control pressures. Uh, I. I have 90 degree turn here for an example. I definitely like 180 degree turns better. Um, at least in this aircraft, because it happens so fast. So yeah, so I had example of 90 degree turn plus 500 feet. I should also put in there constant speed or rate of climb. But yeah, so maintaining, maintaining those. Um, again, recovering half the bank angle from our heading uh, for the turn portion and 10 feet per minute divided by 10 from our altitude and then reconfiguring for straight level flight common errors uh same as a climb as well as a level turn um and there's an increased likelihood of those those issues and a combination of them because of that increase in complexity descending turn um Again, maintaining scan, lifting, lowering wings. Um, it's a descent plus a level turn. There's an extra space in there I didn't need. Uh, also do these in the pattern as well as for efficiency. Power for the descent. Mixture goes rich. And uh, bottom of the green arc. Oops. For our uh, power. Altitude. We put our desired bank in, oops, which is 30 degrees, we'll say. Oop, can't see things. 30 degrees, and let's do feet per minute for this one. And we're going down 500 feet, so we're maintaining our VSI and our 30 degree bank, watching for our heading. And again, rolling out. And increasing power. So rolling out half the bank angle in degrees from our heading. And increasing power. Oops. Feet per minute divided by 10 from our altitude. Reconfiguring for straight and level flight. Errors, common errors, are again same as for a descent as well as for a level turn. Increased likelihood due to the increase in complexity and combination. <sighs> yes. The flows definitely need work. <laughs> so it wouldn't also use terms like turn radius and rate of turn. Um, uh, potential, potentially not, probably not. It depends on how beginner, I guess. And, and I guess it's one of those things kind of like when you're talking to ATC, like there are, there are certain scripts, but if you really need to, you just have the conversation because otherwise it just makes it more difficult. Um, so yes, definitely avoiding technical terms as much as possible right like especially right away because this is this would be like way way beginner like this is the first thing that you start doing so and, and that's what I was trying to do is trying to make it as yeah just as not as non technical as possible and just like this is the stuff that you do and then at some point it's like you start getting into the, okay, so like I know how to do it now or they know how to do it now. So like, why is that the way that we do it? So it is, it ends, that's one of the things that worry is it's, it's, it's tough for me is trying to figure out how, what balance to strike there is I don't want to be leaving stuff out 
thinking that it's too much for them um, when it's like really, really important or would be, would be important and good for them to know right away. Um, whereas, yeah, also like having stuff in there that doesn't necessarily help them right away. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, that's all I got. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions, chicken? Your most excellent student. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn back towards the airport. Doing a nice level. <laughs> Not level. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's the it's about that time. I am. I'm so. I'm. I'm so sorry for the lateness. I appreciate you all sticking with me here through all of the troubles and the time. Um. It was. It was a lot of good, uh, uh surprise uh, experiences. Uh, why? I, I'm, I'm so out of the proper mode now. I'm just like, nah, let's have some fun. Oh, oh, well, oh, shoot. Um, oh, I want, I kind of wanted to do a thing, but uh, honestly, I'm so freaking tired. I don't have time. Oh, that's not the correct, hang on. Wait, what? Oh, well, hang on. I have to go this way. I was going to the completely wrong airport. Hang on. Oh, hope this isn't a steep turn. Honestly, like I don't, I don't know what any of this is anymore. Um. Well, I, I'm, I'm. <laughs> I, I'm going to do a really butchered version of what of what I meant to do. Keep that phrasing in mind. We, You do have one. Why am I calling you chicken? Oh, no, no, no. Chicken is my only student. Y'all aren't students. Y'all are observers of, of, of the um, disaster that is my flows um no ch he yes he he is he is my co-pilot and he is my 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 one and only student current student oh shoot frick ah went too far yeah i was aiming at entirely the wrong airport because it is again that time. <laughs> Thank you. We'll enjoy the, enjoy the stream again next time. Sounds good. Thank you. I do appreciate you being here. Happy to have you. We usually, we usually fly on Tuesdays. So that'll be, it'll be on, it should be on Tuesday. I'll throw that up out there, my Discord. I'll let you know if uh, I end up having to switch it up again. But yes, we usually do fly on Tuesdays. Um, it's coming up to December, so... We might start playing some uh, December flavored games. Shoot, I need to be doing stuff. Um, I would so like to get back to reading. I loved reading the Christmas stories last year. I'm not sure. I don't have any in the queue right now um, that I've looked up. So it might just reading, December reading might just be the usual Christmas carol. Um, the last week before Christmas, and that's usually on Thursdays. And then, yeah, December games usually are on Sundays. And then if we end up doing that, I want to at least, I don't know how often, but um, yeah, those will be on Sundays if, 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 and when we do do the, the games. Yeah. And yes, come next Friday, I can stop being a Grinch. Because it is. It is turkey month currently. I'm just going to add a couple more things here. And then we will head straight back to the airport. 
you will yeah yeah you'll, you'll understand you'll you'll maybe understand i'll explain once once we check out our uh our uh, track nope 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 Oh, and that should be good. So, yes, yes, that'll be good. Almost done, and then we'll be heading straight back. <laughs> it actually kind of worked out a little bit, like kind of. My, 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 my brain makes it work out. It's a bit forced, but it'll have to do. Ah, <sighs> yes, we're getting in. I'm getting in one one more lesson this week um yeah so I'll have more stories probably only the one next week and then yeah it's gonna be one two three this week next week and then the next week I, oops oh shoot turning way too far um I'll have my instructor still and then after that my plan is once he's uh, off doing training um, I want to start flying twice a week uh, once in my home airplane once in the my instructor's uh, home airplane so the 150 and yeah just really practicing the flows getting those down getting them um, what's the word uh, polishing um, and then yeah once I get properly comfortable with all of that then I'm gonna start flying with mock student who's not like who's interested in in flying but uh, not necessarily hopefully will potentially uh, at some point get um, a private at least my instructor's buddy was his first student um and he just got his instrument recently so must not have messed him up too bad <laughs> all right okay we are on our way back let me see if i can do anything to make this any more better <sighs> Oops. <gasps> oh, gosh. Going this way. Oops. Oh, they. <sighs> My instructor in during our lesson, he said, "You almost got to go to on very like long ferry flight to cool cool place." And unfortunately for me, his buddy was able to move some stuff around, and he got to go instead. <laughs> So uh, they they did they did a ferry flight um, and then had to airline it back. So yeah, he texted me and he said should have come with. It was a beautiful flight. I was like thanks, so nice. And that is that's something that I haven't I haven't fully thought of. He's done a lot of that, but. Again, the only airline flight that I've, I might have been on two airline flights, at least one, was when I was about two. So, like, almost part of the reason, like a very back burner reason for me getting into this is because I, I, I just don't like the idea of airports at all, like big commercial airports and having to deal with all of that stuff. So like, hey, uh, I'll fly myself places <laughs> very slowly, but I will fly myself places. 
Um, yeah, so that, like, uh, I don't know. I haven't had any opportunities for doing that yet. That would have been one. So at some point, potentially, maybe. But unfortunately for my instructor, I am a commercial pilot, so he would have to split that with me. His, his buddy's not, so he didn't have to split it. He was just along for the ride. But yeah, it would. It'd be definitely good experiences. I ha I do. I want to start doing some solo flights and some fun flights. Not all the way, like training flights. I've been focusing on that so much. And, oh, moon. It takes its toll at a point. And then you do. At some point, you gotta you gotta remind yourself why you're doing it. Oop. Okay. Make sure I don't uh, go to the wrong runway. Oops. Oh, I have to do my TSA. Okay, couple things I have to remember. I have to text my DPE tomorrow and see what the schedule is like in the next how many months. And I have to do my TSA thing. Apparently, it only takes 30 minutes. I've been putting it off. However, it should be fine. Um, still need my spin endorsement because I want a little bit more training to feel comfortable before getting my endorsement. Um, taking my FOI test soon. Oh, speaking of that, too, my instructor tells me he had somebody pass a check ride recently, which put him over for gold seal so he could get his gold seal. And I was like, well, you got to go do it then. And he's like, no. <laughs> and I tried to convince him. I almost did because, um, well, he realized uh, the seal on your flight instructor certificate uh, turns gold. Yay, fairly, um, there, there's a name, there it is. Um, but then he would have to take his AGI. And he was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And I was going to convince him. Um, I had to take my FOI so he could go take his AGI. And then he was going to go do it, kind of. But then he's like, okay, first I have to, he has to go to the, he has to do his AGI, which is, almost 200 bucks and then he would have to go to the FISDO get an appointment to like get the stuff so that he could uh, start working on that for the gold seal thing and then he would go have to go back to the FISDO again and he just really didn't want to do that and he doesn't care so unfortunately but yeah I told him at some point I'm going to get the gold seal and he's going to be really upset about it that I got it and he didn't. And then he made a joke about how long it was going to take me to get a gold seal. <laughs> Which is fair. All right. Uh, oh, shoot. I should be uh, figuring out how long. Um, oh, God. Uh, there. Um, um, oh, no, um, I have to, uh, direct you. Ah, perfect. Four miles, uh, Graham Traffic, Cessna, Hotel 31, Delta 1. Four miles to the quest at 2,200 inbound for runway. Uh, oh, shoot, we were going to put the weather back on. Inbound for runway 36. Um, I think. Whoop. I don't know what that sound was. Oops. Okay. Um, 
eleven forty, eleven twenty three. So eleven hundred, twenty one hundred is our pattern altitude. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. Which is why we cross check. Oh, I guess I was going to actually look for the weather, too. All right. Uh, automated 330, 14 gusting 23. A 3016 is now our altimeter. Whoosh. Perfect. Oh. I was so, I was so confused about why it was rising so much because I oh oops I promise I promise I promise I fly better in an actual plane because I'm actually flying in the air it was rising because I am flying in the air um, and we are not on the ground so yes I understand things. My first, my first, the first night landing that I did, um, last lesson, almost forgot the landing light, but I did. So that was good. A beam, bring it down to 1900. Car peak goes out, which should bring it down to 1700. Below 100 uh, miles per hour slash within the white arc notch of flaps goes in keep that nose coming down we got a lot of wind so we're going to turn quickly not quickly but just not going to get blown as far downwind keep that nose coming down keep that nose coming down bring that speed up a little bit wah there we go. All right. Scanning. No traffic. Whoops. Notch of flaps. We overshot, but did not overcorrect. So that is good. All right, keeping our nose coming down, bringing our power out a little bit high. 500. Yes. Speed's high, so we're bringing our power back some more. Nose coming up. Idling. Uh, I'm leaning normal, normal, normal. Definitely could have um, slipped it a little bit. Is that, oops, that was skinny runway. Oops, oh god. Crosswind correction. Oh, I, I feel like that, oh my god, that was terrible. Watching Speaking runway. of hard landing. <laughs> a little crosswindier. Thank you for flight. My rudders are under my freaking... Those aren't supposed to be there anyway, so we didn't break anything. Mm. Not hitting anybody else. Going back to our spot with our, our, our tail between our legs. Or tail between our main gears. Whooshed. <sighs> I pressed the wrong button for our second notch of flaps. For the love of God. Double check. Our pito heat was on again. That's that's the button that I pressed. So shutting down. <laughs> Electronics go off.
and off. All the good things. Whooshed. Whooshed. Oi, oi, oi. Continue! Because, because, for the love. We're not doing it again. Click. Boom. And boom. All right. We did the things. Control the space. And back over. Doors. Doors. Uh, yoke. Outside. Walk around. <sighs> Excellent. Okay. Oops. Leaning on my rotor pedals. <sighs> Get some pretty music going. Then we'll look at our track. And then we will be done. <sighs> oh my goodness gracious. Oh! Oh! How y'all do? <laughs> um, dead. Where's little nav map? Looking at our little nav map. Where is it? Ooh. Definitely starting to feel it more. Okay, so we started. Oh, well, we. Should we go over? We started. Um, well, let's 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 look. Let's look. So we started here. Look at this freaking tangle. Soup, not soup, spaghetti. It's got an S and a P. Please bear with me. We started. We taxied every time I had no idea where I was going. Taxied. And then we went, started our takeoff roll. No airspeed. So we uh, stopped takeoff um, and then just went there. Yes. No. No. We stopped takeoff. We taxied back in or maybe we just stopped there. I don't know. Re right there. That's where we stopped. We stopped there. We restarted there. We taxied again. Back taxi. And then we took off. And realized we had no friggin' oil pressure. So we came back around. Did a very long downwind. That was a s nope. But then we taxied off. Tried to fix it. Wasn't fixing. We put oil in it. It was leaking. So we restarted again. And then we checked all the things. Everything looked good. So we back taxied. We took off. Finally. Got out, and then we uh, just, yeah, started doing stuff. And then our first straight and level flight, and then um, uh, I, I don't know after that what everything was. Um, we turned. Uh, we uh, did some more turns, climbs, descents, climbs, descents, turns, and level turning, level tur climbing and turning and descending and turning. And then um, we were about here when, here, here, about here. Uh, when I realized um, I wanted to do some track art. So, think abstract. <laughs> and for the festivities, what, 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 what could it look like? What could it symbolize, this, this, this here track? I wish I could zoom in just like a little bit more, but not too much more. Like that. It's kind of, oh, wait, can I get rid of this? Oh, <gasps> yes, I can. Yes, I can. There. So I added I, I I added this bit and then one more of these bits and then I went back and kind of did this thing. <laughs> it actually works better. I was doing it one way, but it actually works better that way. So thoughts, thoughts. I will spoil it. I will spoil it in. Oh 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 oh! I'll go back to my um. When I said uh shoot, I can't remember exactly what I said. Um, something about how I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> but, um, is a turkey. 
Toiki did not skip leg day. Oh no. Yeah, I was I was looking at it like this first, and I was like, oh, that can be the foot, and that can be the um, pecking. But no, no, it works better this way. It looks much more bird-like. It almost looks a little bit like a dinosaur, and aren't they kind of descended from dinosaurs or something? I don't know. thought that was a thing. But yes, beefy-legged turkey with his little those things, and then little head and neck, little gobbler. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, nothing, nothing left. Brain is mush. All right. Um, well, can send y'all off to a raid. Um, uh, I will, I will not be staying. I have to go to bed. Let me know if you, uh, like, if you have somebody in mind. Otherwise, we will find somebody. Um, so yes, again. We usually fly on Tuesdays. I'm not able to tomorrow, so that's why we did it tonight. So we should be flying uh, next tu next Tuesday. That should be the next time. There's my Discord. If I uh, have to change things again, I'm I'm usually I usually uh, remember to uh, inform, uh, but sometimes it's just a little later than I probably should. Sorry. Um, turning that so that I can find things. So yes, next Tuesday we'll be flying, um, barring changes, and then, yeah, again, the Sunday after that is the beginning of December, so we will potentially, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, um, go do, start doing December-y games, um, uh, and or... Potentially not going to be doing the reading each Thursday, just because I don't I don't know um, what uh, I have to browse first before I do that. Browsing for the raid things. Um, flight simulator. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to have the time to find a proper. Um proper stories so yeah but as always we'll be doing um what's it called christmas carol the week before christmas so doing the checkings we try to keep it ga Oh. Oh, an ad. Not getting anything. A log book. Ooh. All right, here we go. Um, all right, so I found a spot. It's first attempt. So that should be fun. I recall the days. Um, let me get the thing set up. All right. Okay, so whoever got lost and found their way here or found their way back, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for putting up with me, bearing with me through all of the things. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah, 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 it was, it was, we, we did, we got through our operation of systems, ground mock lesson slash blows as, oh, that was a strange thing to do with chicken. Um, and then we did our 
uh, eventually were able to do our fundamentals of flight quote. So yes, that was that was that. Um, yeah, brain is absolute mush. So if I've forgotten anything, I'm sorry. Um, didn't mean to. Thank you, Mustafa, for the raid. It was a lot of fun. Always enjoy seeing you. Charlie Foxtrot, thank you as always for all the help. Um, check him out. I I believe he's he's streaming on Wednesday. So yes, always a fun time. Always great streams. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next Tuesday. So happy Thanksgiving to whoever celebrates it. Otherwise, have a great week. Have a great weekend. For now, have a great whatever it's going to be for you. Hope to see you again soon. Until next time. Thank you so much. Have a great time in the raid. And yeah, thank you. And bye.